This was a good six months back. My girlfriend was staying at her parents. So I, 27 male, was at her flat alone. Around 3 a.m., I am woken up by a loud slam. I quickly jolt up. My bedroom door is wide open and I see a bald man walk straight past my room and into my living room. I must have forgotten to lock the front door that night. I jump out of bed and immediately my mind made the decision to stand in front of the front door. I figure there's only one way out and if he's taking anything, I can try to stop him. I also made the subconscious decision not to put any clothes on so I could get to the door quicker and so I'm standing there completely naked. Not important to the story, just semi-amusing. Anyway, this dude comes stumbling back to the door, has a handful of loose cans of Stella cradled in his arms, a half-smoked cigarette in his mouth, and a plastic shopping bag hanging from one of his hands. I asked what he was doing in my flat, to which he replied, I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. Though he could hardly get the words out, he was clearly absolutely fucked. I asked him to show me the contents of his bag, which didn't have any of our stuff in it, before proceeding to let him out of the flat, locking the door this time. I'm assuming he was just out of his mind, on whatever, and walked into the wrong flat. One funny detail... There was a point where one of the cans slipped from his grip and he had to bend down to pick it up, making him directly eye level with my bare waist. It was a very awkward moment and I'm sure this poor guy doesn't remember, so hasn't been completely scarred. Anyway, I got back into bed and could hardly sleep for the rest of the night. My heart was absolutely thumping. I will say, it gave me some confidence in my fight or flight response. You never really know what you'll be like in that sort of situation. And I was quite proud after the fact that I blocked the exit. I'm perhaps not the most masculine of men. So that was some nice affirmation. Completely true story by the way. One of the most terrifying moments of my life. Seeing a stranger casually stroll into my living room in the dead of night. My husband and I moved into a cool downtown loft in 1999 in the San Diego gas lamp district. We had an underground parking garage that is managed by security after the management team left for the day. My husband worked nights while I attended UCSD. On New Year's Eve 1999, my good friend came to visit and to hit the parties. 2000 baby. I had secured a spot for her in the visitor section and went down to meet her. The security guard on duty was a middle-aged gentleman. I have long since forgotten his name. He was always very nice, but there was something about him that bothered me, and I don't know why. When I met my friend at the front gate, he came to speak to us and asked us about our plans. My friend told him that we were hitting the town on such an exciting night, etc. I said nothing until we got away from the building. For some reason, I said... If anything ever happens to me, tell the police to check that guy out, not my husband. She laughed and asked me why I told her that, and I told her it was just a feeling I had. A few weeks later, I saw him leaving the unit of my neighbor that was out of town. I thought it was odd as he's the parking lot guard. When I mentioned it to another neighbor, she told me that the guards have the master key to the lofts in case of an emergency. Okay. My husband worked nights. He knows this. I get a creepy feeling around him. That's great. We added a chain to the door. It already had a bolt and a regular lock, and that made me feel a little better. Later that year, we're watching the news. The security guard's face pops up on the local TV. I pay close attention. Turns out he's one of the Aryan leaders from San Diego, and he had just been found guilty of some race-related crime. That was sending him away for a long time. I lost it. Why? I am black and my husband is white. I thought back to every time he spoke to us. How conciliatory he was. How much he asked how we were doing. How he'd asked my husband about his job. All the little seemingly innocuous questions he put to us. And it scared me to death. He had a key to my home. 
He had been bothered by our relationship, but he never showed it, except to my sixth sense. I raced to my management office as soon as I opened the next day. One of my neighbors had beat me there. It was the guy whose unit I saw him exiting a few months before. He was threatening to sue management because he had told them months ago that this guy was Aryan and that he was distributing hate leaflets to his son. He was divorced and his son stayed with him every other weekend. From the gist of his yelling, I discerned that management advised that they asked the guard and he denied any knowledge of pamphlets. His last words as he was leaving was that he was conferring with a lawyer since they did nothing at the time. Now this guy is on the news for hate crimes committed. He was obviously Aryan and their lack of intervention had allowed him to influence a minor. I have no idea what happened with him as he moved soon after. I told them about my concerns and they said they contracted with the security company and that he passed all background checks at the time of his employment. Why he was even working as a security guard, I have no idea. Being young, we just let it go. I can still clearly see his face when I think about him, but none of the search information I've used brings up his case. I've thought about looking it up at the courthouse. There must be some way. But then think, what's the point? He's in jail still. I hope. For context, I'm a woman living alone in an apartment that is located on the ground floor and so my balcony is very visible for others to see. Like every night, I work at 4am so I leave around 3.40am. Unfortunately in France, they decided to turn off the lights from 10pm to 6am I think. But thankfully for me, my landlord where I live turned on the lights just for me from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. It's very dim, but I'm thankful for it still. This Thursday morning, I leave like always, go to my car, lock it, turn on my lights, and something caught my eye. So I look up and thought it was a cat jumping from my balcony because they love to come and just look around and leave. It was not a cat. It was a man standing next to my balcony. I think the light surprised him and I'm looking at him walk away from me on the grass, but he can't leave that way. So I'm staring at him, scared and calmly crying, not knowing what to do for like 10 seconds. But then I can see movement again and it's him walking towards me, looking at me quickly, then just continuing walking down the main road like nothing happened. He takes one last look at my car before I lose sight of him. Also, he's wearing black sweatpants and a camo jacket. It's really weird. I don't know what he's doing there. If he was sleeping on my plastic sofa on my balcony. Or I don't know. But I can't stop thinking about his face looking at me. Or what could have happened if it was pitch black outside. I wanted to make a report to the police. But they say they can't. Because there's no damage. The lady also told me. Maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe he was looking around for a dwelling. And I replied, At this hour? At, and in that outfit? I don't think so. No, I'm talking about a robbery. Like, no shit, Sherlock. Since then, every morning I run to my car with pepper spray in my hand. Also, I bought surveillance cameras on my balcony. Just to check before going out in the morning. Because I'm super paranoid. And I'm kind of developing OCD. And I have to look and check outside before going to sleep. Dear random man, let's not meet again. This happened when I was a kid. This was in the mid 80s. I was about 7 at home with my two older sisters, 8 and 11. And two cousins, 7 and 8. All five girls. My sister, Eleven, was in charge of babysitting us four younger girls. You have to picture what our house looked like to understand what happened. It was a two-story box house with a flat roof and a small box front porch, also with a flat roof. I can't remember what we were doing, 
but we were all in the house. We kept hearing noises coming from the roof, like walking, and what sounded like rocks being dropped down the downspouts. You know, kids, we thought it was a squirrel or something, but it kept happening. Then my older sister said something about how maybe someone climbed the huge tree besides the house and got on the roof. We were all scared because we knew there was a roof access point in the bedroom I shared with one of my sisters. What if he could get inside? My older sister told my other sister and one of our cousins to walk across the street to the corner store across an empty gravel parking lot and on the way back look up to see if they could see someone on the roof. So the girls, both about eight years old, walked halfway across the parking lot and being curious kids turned around. They looked up. They looked up and saw a guy. He was in a totally 80s crop top football jersey and he was crouched down on the roof. The girls came running back home freaked out and told my sister about the guy. My older sister, freaking out, first went to the neighbor's house to use her deck to see if she could see on the roof but couldn't see anything. She came home and then called the police. It felt like it took them ages to show up. When they got there, I don't think they believed a word that we said. They thought a bunch of little kids were making up a story for attention up a hill and a block away to see if they could see anything but the way our roof was you couldn't see a person if they were laying down. Then the cop tells us kids we had to go upstairs and check everywhere to see if we found anyone. Five little girls from ages 7 to 11 sent upstairs, scared shitless, crying, to look for this man. Knowing about the roof access, we all cried not wanting to go up there, but they said we had to. To this day, I remember how scared I was. I remember looking, but how well do kids look, right? The cops didn't listen to us didn't check out the house, inside or out, and left. We were so scared to be left at home with that guy out there, who knows where. We didn't know if he was laying down on the roof, or jumped down, or somehow got in and was hiding. My mom finally got home a few hours later, and we told her what happened. My mom explained to us that there was a lock on the roof access, and no one could get in, but she checked anyways, then went to check outside. There were footprints in the dirt. Doug and Good from him jumping off the roof onto the porch and off into the flower bed. My mom was steaming mad when she realized we told the truth and weren't believed by the police. We went to the police station the next day and were all separated and interviewed. We all told the same story. We never found out who the guy was or why he was there. Did you know it was a house with five little girls home alone? I answered the door to a guy who was dressed as a UPS driver, had the logo on his jacket, and everything. I assumed my parents had ordered something that I needed to sign for, so I answered it. After opening the door and greeting him, I realized that not only did he not have anything for me, but there wasn't even a UPS truck in sight. He told me that his name was Troy, and that he was selling lawn care services around the neighborhood. I started to figure that maybe he was a UPS worker who forgot to change his clothes before starting his second job as a landscaper or gardener. But then he started asking me weird questions like if we had any security cameras or large dogs in our house. We do have security cameras, but they are quite hidden, and I told him we did not. And even though our largest dog is a one-year-old beagle, I told him we have two pit bulls. The entire time, he wasn't looking at me, he was looking around me, letting his eyes coast around the inside of the house, probably looking for visible sights of something valuable. He then asked me the weirdest question. He asked why I had my door cracked instead of opened all the way. I lied and said it's because I don't want my pit bulls to see him and start going nuts. Truth is, I always do this when I answer the door for strangers so I can close it as fast as possible, should they try something. He then gave me a poorly made flyer for his supposed lawn care business and went down the street to the next house. I shut my door and locked all the locks on it. Tony, I hope I don't see you on the news anytime soon.
This happened many years ago in 2012. I was a 17 year old and living in the UK in a council housing area populated by mostly ethnic minorities, immigrants and students. It was a pretty ordinary summer afternoon when there was a knock on my door. My sister went to open it. We weren't expecting anyone and were a pretty private family so I stood watch behind her. It was an old white man. He was short with white hair covered with a baseball hat, clean shaven, wearing a t-shirt and jeans. In his hand, he had a little toolbox, like one of those old school retro toolboxes. I remember paying attention to that for some reason. He smiled after my sister greeted him and asked, do any Asian girls live here? Obviously the alarm bells go off in our heads because what kind of question is that? He wasn't looking for a certain house or person and did not indicate he was lost. He just asked us that one question. We said no and he went on his way. My sister closed the door and turned to me with a perplexed look on her face. We were both thinking how weird that was. Just as we were heading back into the living room, there's another knock at the door. And it's our next door neighbor. The two girls at our door are both East Asian University students. Girl 1 asked us about the guy and if he asked for Asian girls living there. We told her everything that happened during our interaction with him and laughed uncomfortably. We were all so creeped out and although no one said it, we all felt like we had met someone very very strange and possibly dangerous. Who was he? What the hell did he want with Asian girls? And what was in the toolbox? I ran upstairs and watched him walk to the next houses across the street from my bedroom window and eventually leave our street, disappearing around the corner. What do you think he was up to? So this happened, I want to say around the year 2012 or 2013. Me and my mom lived just by ourselves in my grandma's old house. After she died in 2009, it was just us. My mom had the habit of leaving our house and visiting family really often. Since my entire family lived in the same town, sometimes I would go with her and sometimes I would stay home and play games on PC. One night in particular, I was home alone. I can't remember if I was listening to music or on the game, but it was almost 11 at night and I had gotten a knock at the door. At that time we had four dogs that lived in our house and all of them started going insane barking. This wasn't abnormal, as they would bark at the neighbors if they saw them through our living room window, getting out of their car, across the street, or heard anyone within 5 miles of radius talking. My bedroom happened to be on the front of the house, with the window directly facing the porch and the door. Because of that, I was able to take a slight look to see who it was, and it wasn't someone who I'd seen before. My mom rarely had people come to the house but there had been a few that came to talk to see her or see if she was home. Not super late, but I ran with it. Didn't think twice about it. I thought it was just one of her coworkers coming to see if she was home. I opened the door and I was greeted by this guy in his early 40s wearing a brown work jacket and light blue jeans. So he definitely looked the part of someone who was from the factory. I opened the door to see what he wanted and he said something along the lines of, Hey, how's it going? And some small stuff here and there. It's hard to recall too much of the small talk, but he did ask something like, Is anyone else around? Or... I was still under the impression at the time that it was a guy that my mom knew from work. So I told him that, Yeah, right now I'm the only one here. My mom went to my cousin's house, but she should be back soon. He said some other things, like his name I think and he said that he recently moved here from Indiana and he was going around to each of the neighbor's house saying hi and introducing himself. I was like, yeah around here that could get you shot since it's not normal to show up at someone's house to introduce yourself let alone this late at night. He told me that where I'm from in Indiana it's normal for people to do that. He said his goodbyes and left. The car that had been running sitting outside my driveway on the road 
looked like a decently new car, so I didn't think much of it at the time. I figured I wouldn't really have anything that this guy couldn't already afford. So as far as him being a burglar, I figured I was in the clear. My mom got home 30 minutes to an hour later and I told her about it. It wasn't really until her reaction to what happened that it really sunk in. I never really saw this guy again after that encounter and I wasn't sure what he was after. My mom told me I was lucky that maybe he didn't barge in because all four dogs were there with me. Each of them pretty protective. They all kept an eye on the guy as he talked. Maybe he was telling the truth and maybe it was a harmless encounter out of the ordinary. But I still think about it from time to time. Like what exactly was he doing there? This happened when I was 8 years old. I moved to Las Vegas at the beginning of February. And when I got off the plane, it felt like an oven had been opened up in my face. I moved from England. The first few weeks were spent in a military-owned apartment unit until my parents could afford a house. We got a house, and we got our room set up for the night, not bothering to check the house, as we thought it would be secure by the people who sold it to us. Bedtime came around, and I tried to sleep, but I couldn't. It was too hot. So I tried sleeping on the floor. It was too cold, so I decided to curl up in a ball on the floor and sleep. Because my dad told me that the fetal position maintains body heat. It worked for a while, until I felt something tapping on my back. Not a single tap, but like someone was running their finger on my back. I never turned around to see who it was, and I'm glad I didn't. Because a helicopter flew over our house shining a searchlight through our window. My dad woke up and got on the balcony and heard it say, some guy broke out of prison and they saw him in our backyard. The guy was gone by then. My dad checked the whole house and the next day bought locks and a gate. I moved into a new apartment maybe last August right outside of a busy side road that leads to the grocery store. There's constantly cars on it, unless it's late. Usually after 8, it tends to become empty and barren. The street lights line the path on both sides. However, across the street are large trees and a lot of trash. The trash resembles a homeless man's home. But I've walked by it many times and never seen a person. One night, I was outside on my deck smoking and I looked and I could see a man under the branches of a low-hanging tree. He was standing in the dark, motionless, not saying a thing. I couldn't tell if he was staring at me, or the trees, or anywhere. I just saw the figure. It freaked me out, so I went inside. I turned the TV on and forgot about it. An hour later, I turned off the TV and closed my blinds, and the man still standing there, in the same spot, not moving. I wonder what he's doing, if he's even real, or my imagination. I'm a 30 year old female. I live in a relatively safe neighborhood, barring the occasional mugging attempts, one of which took place against my bedroom window with one of my neighbors or the few times a random guy in his car follows me to my place, asking me for my number. Things are generally stable. I typically have a way with dealing with these assholes by taking advantage of random empty lots on my street where cars can't drive, forcing them to go around the block, and by the time they manage to turn around the corner, I will have ran back into my house. No biggie. A few months ago, some genius in our street paid someone in the city to move the neighborhood garbage can to another place, whereas before it was right down the block. Now it's a few minutes away. Now I have to walk a while before I can throw out my garbage in a usually quite busy area, which I find embarrassing. So I start waiting until nightfall to do so. I know, stupid, especially with everything I told you before. 
But I got sloppy. Things started feeling safer in the last few months, so I felt comfortable leaving my house after sundown. Until last Sunday, at least. Like usual, I waited until it was dark to go. After throwing out my garbage, I stopped by the convenience store nearby to pick up something. On my way back to my place, and at the entrance of my street, I noticed a young man standing in front of the parking lot, located in front of my neighbor's house, just across the street of mine. He was talking on the phone and looking away from me, but as I rounded the corner, I noticed the guy sitting quietly on his motorbike right in front of my doorstep. Something about how he was already looking at me just as my eyes landed on him freaked me out. I did the quick math and realized that by the time I would be able to open my door, if ever, he would catch me if he wanted to. This time, the empty lot trick wouldn't work as I would have to walk past him first, but also his motorbike couldn't be driven on it. I turned on my heels back to the convenience store hoping he was just a delivery guy waiting for someone to meet. I dilly-dally at the store for a while, but when I went back home, I found he was still there on his bike, while the guy in front of my neighbor's parking lot was also still on the phone, just staring at me before I'd seen him. I realized then that something was not right, and luckily I noticed the security guard of the street behind us sitting in his booth. I approached him and explained the situation, hoping that he would walk me to my place, which he gladly did. The moment the guy on the phone saw me return with the security guard, he put his phone in his pocket and turned towards the other guy on the bike, who drove to him. Keep in mind, these two were not even looking at each other, let alone looked like they knew each other. The guy who was on his phone sat behind the motorbike dude, and they both drove past me while staring at me. Both the security guard and I agreed that something was funny about the entire situation and he thankfully waited until I was safely behind locked doors. I don't know if those two wanted to mug me or if they had more sinister intentions but I'm glad I trusted my gut and didn't just go home otherwise who knows what would have happened. Alright so this happened when I was about 11. I'm a female I had a friend, 12 year old female, over at my dad's house for the first time and we were having a lot of fun. My dad went into the front yard to take a phone call. At this time it was about 10.30 at night and we were all hyped up off of Dr. Pepper and Mountain Dew and were hyper so we went outside with my dad. We mainly stayed in the front yard until we decided that we wanted to go inside. Me and my friend jumped over the back fence because we were right next to it. For context, I had a pit bull and a very large German Shepherd who were also in the backyard. My friend and I went up to the second floor and were playing with makeup. About 20 minutes later, we went back downstairs because I heard my dogs barking and decided to let them in. The dog had their own fenced off area in the backyard so they wouldn't interfere with the garden. I let them in because my dad hadn't yet. My friend pointed out that my dad was still out on the front porch. Okay, cool. I went to my back door to open it and I see a man crouching by the back gate, staring at my back door. He was next to the side of the gate that we had previously jumped. I asked my friend to stay there and make sure that the man stayed there too. I was going to check if my dad was still on the front porch. He was. For some reason I didn't tell my dad that there was a man in our backyard. Instead, me and my friends watched him for about 20 minutes. After these 20 minutes, he moved across the street and crouched next to a car for 5 minutes, then comes back to the gate. I decided it was unsafe for my dogs to still be out in the yard, so I turned on the light to help me see clearer and let the dog gate open. After I let my dogs in, this guy is still crouched, not moving a bit. 10 more minutes, which seemed like 10 hours, pass, and the man's still there but stands up. After seeing the man stand up, I realize that he's holding something which looked like a metal pipe. I locked the door and me and my friend ran across the house to the front door to tell my dad to come inside. I never gave him an explanation as to why, but I'm guessing he saw the urgency in my voice and listened. So to the man crouched outside my backyard for at least half an hour. Let's not meet.
Okay, to start this, I live in a very rural town in Australia. I have a close-knit group of about four to five friends, and we hang out all the time. On this specific day, I was at my friend's house. About two days before this, her family came home, and all the doors were wide open, yet nothing was taken. This family isn't the one to leave the doors open, specifically in this town where crime runs rampant. On the day that I was over, let's call these two friends, Alyssa and Mike. Me and Mike were over at Alyssa's just hanging out on our phones when the front door banged open. We all looked at each other, but brushed it off as the wind slamming the door. In hindsight, one would have not been able to reach that door, as it was a little covered. I don't know how to explain it, but you have to walk upstairs, and then there's a little room, and then there's the front door. Maybe two minutes later, the two sliding back doors slammed very loudly. We again brushed it off. To not scare ourselves. We are kind of dumb. I'm sorry. But then we heard loud noises inside the house and footsteps running around their noisy wooden floors. This is where the alarm bells started firing off in my head. I was thinking about how someone had already been there and was wondering if it was the same person or people. We jumped up and me and Alyssa held the bedroom door closed. Her room didn't have a lock. Alyssa suggests that we call the police. I didn't think it was a good idea, but as I'm holding the door, someone starts running and slams into her door. At this point, it was definitely time to call the police. They pick up, try to talk to Alyssa. A little difficult because she was bawling her eyes out. Eventually, the operator understood and within less than two minutes, police are at the door. These police officers were very kind and just asked about the situation before saying, We found the kid. I thought they meant the person who had broke in, so I asked them about the kid. The police looked confused and said, The missing five-year-old. We had no clue that there was a missing child on the loose. The police officer said that there was over 40 cars looking for this kid and many police knocking on doors to ask if anyone had seen her. While I think the police were kind, their reasoning for breaking in was crazy. They said it was probably a police officer running in looking for the kid. We all looked confused and, and then he realized what he said and started backtracking saying they should have announced themselves though. Pretty scary experience with the police officer trying to calm us down, but after talking about it with my friends, whoever broke in probably saw Alyssa's mom leaving the house with two teens in the back, so they thought the house was empty. Alyssa has a brother, so all together they have three in the house. But on that day, her brother had a friend over, and they were driving somewhere. So please, robber who frequents my house, never come back again. So this happened when I was 14 or 15 and often stayed over at my cousin's and her husband's house. We'll call them Skylar and Josh, female 24, male 26 at the time. I had been staying at their house for a week straight prior to the incident with no issues. It was during the summertime in a neighborhood that was pretty rapidly expanding. You know those monochrome suburban nightmare cul-de-sacs. There are tons of those half-finished houses lining the far end of the neighborhood. I feel this info is pretty important. Anyways, Josh and I were avid movie watchers and stayed up most nights watching whatever looked good. That night, Skylar went to bed early and we stayed up to watch Would You Rather and then Ridiculous 6. Movie sucks by the way. Semi-important context. Josh is a smoker and goes out to the back patio for a cigarette every so often especially at night when he takes their beagle, Banjo, out to pee. I ended up sleeping through the movie on one of their two couches. The couch is backed against the wall and to the left of it is a window into the backyard. It was the only window in the living room. At some point, I keep hearing Banjo whomping and hollering in the playroom, then again in the kitchen, then the playroom, and so on and so forth. The dog is going apeshit in literally every room on the first floor, but he is a clingy dog that hated when Skylar and Josh shut him out of the room, so I figured he was just whining. He's also a beagle, so we're used to him being vocal. In hindsight, 
I probably should have wondered why he was running from room to room. Whatever. I tried to sleep through it. After a good while of Banjo flipping his shit in what I think is a kitchen, he kind of goes quiet. But he wakes me up again growling out the window right next to the couch I'm sleeping on. He would not be still. I still didn't get up. I fell back asleep for a bit. Then out of nowhere, he jumps on the couch right next to my stomach and starts losing his shit barking and howling. That wasn't what woke me up though. It was a light shining from the outside of the window right in my face. I wasn't scared at first, more confused than anything, since my eyes hadn't adjusted at that point. Then the flashlight shines up right on the man's face and he looks identical to Josh. Could have been twins. He's crouched down with his face almost right against the glass and when I see him, I jump really hard. I don't remember if I screamed, but the man started laughing at me. I can hear from the other side of the window. However, because I'm big stupid, I assume Josh is on a smoke break, just trying to spook me. I start walking upstairs, and as I pass their kitchen clock, it was like 4am. I didn't even put two and two together that Josh had no reason to be outside or awake at this hour. I'm so groggy, but also unnerved at this point, so I go to sleep on the upstairs hallway floor. I didn't go alert Skylar of what just happened, mostly because she's a cranky bitch when you wake her up, and I was still more willing to accept the idea that it was Josh being an idiot on a smoke break rather than some maniac scoping the house. The next afternoon, I bring it up to them, and they sort of write it off, ask me if I'm sure that I wasn't dreaming, etc. But they did say they heard the dog going wild. I check outside where the window is, to see if the man dropped any evidence of him being there, and I kind of want to vomit. The tall grass around the house was pressed down like someone was on their knees. I don't even want to know how long this man was sitting there on the grass to have it pressed down still, but I have a feeling that it was pretty long. Banjo sat by the window for a hot minute, and the flashlight thing was the only thing that woke me up. I'm glad I saw the grass though, because it felt so much like a fever dream. Sometimes I still wonder if it happened, but I know it did. My theory is some squatter in one of the unfinished houses was either bored or on something and decided to go on an adventure. But yeah, I would have absolutely gotten my shit rocked in a horror movie at that age. This incident occurred back in late 2021. I was serving in the military stationed in California and lived off base at the time. It was around 9pm when I was driving home from work. I pulled into my apartment parking garage and noticed a guy I would never seen before and he did not live here. He was just standing there leaning against one of the support columns just staring through my windshield. I tried to gauge what his intentions were by giving him the old Midwest, hey, by raising my finger over my steering wheel. I got nothing, just a blank stare right back at me. At this moment, I knew something wasn't right. I tried to weigh the options in my head. I can awkwardly back out of a very small parking garage and do a few laps around the neighborhood. I could call my roommate and tell him to come down. Strength in numbers, you know. Or I can be a tough and brave military man. I decided to stop overthinking it and just deal with it on my own. I backed into my parking space, all while guys directly across from my parking spot just staring at me. I again do the Midwest finger wave over the steering wheel with zero reaction from this guy. I grit my teeth and get out of my car and start walking towards the only staircase up to my apartment, which he was standing directly in front of. So I obviously had to walk right past him. I start approaching and say, hey, how's it going? Just to gauge his friendliness one more time and got absolutely nothing. So at this point I'm thinking, I'm going to either get stabbed in the neck or shot in the back of the head when I pass him, but nothing happened. I realized that I was overthinking it and began to walk up the stairs to my apartment. I get about a quarter of the way up when I hear running behind me. I started to run up the stairs, skipping a few steps and completely eating shit, cutting my hands and bleeding, but at this point I didn't care at all. 
I got up and kept going up the stairs and got to my door. This scene was honestly straight out of a horror movie. Me trying to get my key in the door. And when I turn around, I see him running up the stairs. It honestly felt like it was all in slow motion. I thankfully got the key in and was able to get inside the house. But my motor skills were not all there at this point. So I struggled to lock the door. I braced it with my foot while he tried to get in and I was able to lock it. He started messing with the door handle and banging on the door while I went to wake up my roommate. I grabbed my gun from my bedroom and we both went and sat in the living room, waiting. After about a minute of this, we decided to call 911. And in about three minutes, around 10 squad cars pull up and search the whole area. The guy was nowhere to be found. While finishing my contract in California, I was paranoid every time I went to the garage. I still don't know what his intentions were, and to this day, that's honestly the part that irks me the most. When I was 17, my bedroom had a window looking out to the backyard. The backyard was fenced in, but on the other side of the fence were some woods and a retention pond. I had never been scared of this and kept the blinds open. So when the sun rose in the morning, the natural light would help me wake up. One night, I was up late on my phone with my dog laying in the bed next to me. At around 2 a.m., my dog jumped up and started barking out the window. At first, I thought he was just barking at his reflection and told him to stop. But then I realized he was looking at the left side of the window where his reflection was on the right. I couldn't see outside the window because I had my lamp on, on my nightstand. All I could see in the window was the reflection of my bedroom. Not wanting to alert whatever might be out there that I was scared, I fake a yawn, set my phone aside, and turned off the lamp. I then laid down facing the window, and I swear I saw a set of human eyes looking back at me from the left side of the window. I drink a lot of water at night, so I had an empty bottle on my nightstand. I grab it and pretend I didn't realize it was empty. I turned on the lamp and acted like I was going to get water. I went to my parents' room and my dad told me not to worry. We have these motion activated floodlights and they hadn't turned on. So there was no way anything was out there. I went back to my room and told myself I was just seeing things. I closed my blinds and turned my lamp off and got some sleep. I went to take my dog out and decided to check the pine straw bedding underneath my window. It was visibly disturbed. I did my best to ignore that and remember what my dad said about the floodlights. That worked pretty well until my dad tested the floodlights later that day and found that the bulbs had burnt out. To this day I keep my blinds closed and my lamp off while I sleep. I don't want to risk anything being able to see me. And if something is somehow peeking through my window, I want to know it's there. If there is someone at my window that night, let's not meet. Edit. I just want to say thanks for everyone that commented. I typed this out because of a project I've been working on that caused this memory to resurface. Sometimes just writing something like this down and chucking it into the void helps me deal with it. I'm 22 now, so I'm far enough removed from it that I can mostly just look at it as a weird experience I had. But there is definitely a degree of paranoia left from this and other things I've dealt with. To everyone who had similar experiences, I hope everything turned out okay and that you're doing well. I've interacted with a few of you in the comments and you seem like strong people. To anyone who does this, peeking through window shit, fuck off. This story belongs to my sister. Back in 2009, my then 21 year old sister was living alone after getting into a fight with my parents. She worked as a waitress while going to school, so obviously money was scarce. She was living in a very bad part of town in an apartment complex that from far away looked okay, but things got worse once she took a step closer. It was one of those two floor South Florida buildings 5 out of 18 were currently occupied. The rest were in such bad shape that they couldn't be rented. We're talking about holes in the roof, broken pipes, etc. 
One night, my sister was getting home around 11 p.m. after her shift, and she noticed an old van parked in one of those spots next to the stairs that she had to take up to get to her apartment. I guess natural instincts kicked in because she decided not to use those stairs and to use the other set of stairs on the other end of the building. She had to walk across the entire parking lot to reach those stairs. As she's doing this and going up the stairs, she looks at the van and realizes that there's two people in it, sitting in the dark, looking at her. She decides to hurry up and sort of sprint to her apartment. By now, she sees these guys got out of their van, and they started running up the stairs, next to with a van, to catch her. Her apartment is so close to the stairs that they are running up, that by the time she's near her door, they're about halfway through the stairs. She turns around and starts running towards the other set of stairs that she had just came up from. By the time she's going down the stairs, the other guys are chasing her, running on the second floor towards her direction. Going down the stairs, she couldn't run across the parking lot onto the street because they would have caught her. So she ran to the back of the building hoping to jump the fence or something. Unfortunately, the fence was too high and she obviously wasn't going to make it over. She spots all the way in the corner a big dumpster that has a lock on it. She runs over towards it hoping to get it and jump the fence and get on the street, but when she jumps, the entire plastic lid collapses with her weight and she falls into the dumpster. She can hear the guys turning into the area and going, she must be in one of these apartments. Remember, they are abandoned and some have no windows. So they start calling for her, telling her to get out and not to be scared. She's inside the dumpster, holding the cover with her hands from underneath making it look as if it was closed. They get near it. She can hear their footsteps. Since the dumpster was locked, I guess they didn't even try to pull the lid. It was this innocent lock holding this thing together that saved my sister's life. Had they pushed the whole thing up, it would have fallen apart and my sister would have been exposed and probably murdered. They went inside the apartments as she could hear them. The whole thing must have been 40 minutes. They eventually gave up and left. My sister didn't sleep, didn't move, and didn't leave the dumpster till the following morning. She got out once she heard cars and saw daylight. The van wasn't there. She moved back home the same day. I'm a 22 year old male. This happened when I was 14. My family and I lived in a very safe, upper-class neighborhood in a safe city. Our house was right near a local conservation area, popular for hiking, canoeing, camping, and observing wildlife. I was always a paranoid kid growing up for whatever reason. Thinking back, it was probably from one of those sketchy Stranger Danger ads they would show my classmates and I in elementary school. Those things were unnerving. My younger brother and I shared a room all growing up, let's call him Jules, and despite my best efforts to get my parents to build an extension on our place or rejig the layout so that I could have my own room, that was still the case that warm June night. It was actually morning I guess, probably 3 or 3.30 a.m. or so, when I was woken up from my dreamland by the sound of a voice in my room. Obviously I wasn't too worried or anything. Sometimes my brother would talk in his sleep or go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and just like a typical youngest child, failed to be considerate of his snoozing brother in the bed next to him. This time was different though. I wake up in a groggy state and can make out a terrified expression on Jules face. I asked him what he was up to and he looked me dead in the eyes and said, Oh, someone's being raped outside. Now, I hadn't checked at this time. So I brushed it off telling him, go back to sleep, you're just dreaming. That's when he got louder and more assertive. This snapped me into reality and I asked him, what did you just say? He got quiet and repeated what he said before. I didn't know what to do, I was just frozen laying there and that's when I heard it. Help me, I'm being raped. Coming directly in front of our house. Jules in my bedroom faced the street. And because it was so warm that night, we left our window open a crack about a couple inches 
so the cries for help traveled to my ears without difficulty. I suddenly sprung up from my bed and told him not to move. I sprinted down the hall to my parents' room. I swung open the door and they both woke up asking me what the heck I was doing, waking them up in the middle of the night. I told them, someone is being raped outside our house right now. My dad, my hero, didn't even waste a second or question me one bit. He threw on some pajama pants and rushed downstairs. I'm not the kind of kid that would lie about something like that as some sort of twisted prank or anything. My mom starts crying and grabs a landline beside her bed, calling 911, as she can now hear the faint cries for help, even from the other side of the house. My younger sister woke up from her room, too, crying, asking me what's going on. We huddled in my room, and for the first time, we peered out the blinds to see what was transpiring on the streets below. My mom looked first and seemed confused. Down at the end of our driveway was a man, maybe 25, in his boxers, alone. Then we see my dad flick on all the house lights and begin to walk down the driveway towards him, shirtless, with my Louisville Slugger baseball bat in hand. The man stares at him, and at this point, a bunch of our neighbors had woken up, and we see them watching from their doorways. The man then points to our neighbor across the street and yells, It was you! You raped me! To which my dad calmly responds, what happened to you? Do you need help? The man then springs up and hits the back of the windshield of my family van. And my dad says, If you do that again, I'm going to break your legs. We hear the police sirens coming down the street and now five cops pull up. After a few minutes, my dad comes back inside. He tells me everything's fine. That the guy was strung out on heroin and wandered away from his friend's campsite in the conservation area. My whole fam was quite shook up to put it lightly, and nothing like that ever happened again in our neighborhood. That's one image I'll never forget though. My badass dad walking shirtless down the driveway to stop a potential rape with a baseball bat. I came home around 12 a.m. to a house I share with four roommates. When I walk on the sidewalk, I notice a man across the street facing the other side, seemingly doing nothing. I pass by and enter my house, locking the door, and went to the kitchen, passing one of my roommates on the living room couch. The hallway from the front door opens to the living room, and then goes to the kitchen. When I left the kitchen, I saw the dark outline through the window, and stopped to focus my eyes. My couch roommate looked at me confused as I had just stopped in my tracks. The outer door was open and the man from across the street was looking in and then started turning the knob. As I heard the knob start rattling and I said something like, there's a fucking guy at our door. My roommate got up from the couch alarmed and we got closer to the door. I could see the man's face clearer now, pressed up against the door window. His face was blank. He had long, oily hair and pock marks on his cheeks. His expression made me feel incredibly uncomfortable, as it seemed like he was looking through us with no recognition of us. My roommate called down to my basement roommate to make sure the door leading to the backyard was locked. I got closer to the man as he kept trying the handle and went upstairs to alarm my other roommate. When I came back down, the man wasn't at the door anymore, so we peered out the window only to see him standing in our walkway, looking across the street. Reflecting on this, I'm just happy I remembered to lock the door, because we'd often stupidly forget and spend the night with our door unlocked. I can't imagine if the door was unlocked and he stepped into our house. I wonder how this would have went. I think about how he would have probably have walked through the hallway and my roommate on the couch would have just seen a stranger walk into our living room and scared the shit out of him. Most likely this guy was just drugged out by the way his expression was, but who knows what intentions he had. Let's not meet. It's 4am as I'm typing this, trying to shake off the nerves. I'd just fallen asleep after a night out at the bar, celebrating my partner's friend's birthday. 
I woke up very suddenly to what I thought was the sound of my door trying to open. I thought I was crazy but decided to send my drunk boyfriend to look through the peephole. He told me that there was a man standing right outside the door. At the same time, however, there was a woman taking her dog out potty. So being the drunk that he was, my boyfriend couldn't tell if these two were together. The situation didn't sit right with me, so I looked through the peephole, but the man was gone. I took watch for about five minutes, after which I heard some glass break. Eventually, I saw the man walking back in front of my door and around the other side of the building. We have a corner apartment, so I peeked through the blinds on the living room window to try to see him. I saw the man approaching the car right in front of my window. I got scared and stopped looking. I checked again and he was gone. I then went to look through the bedroom blinds and saw him being handcuffed by a sheriff. We were able to catch the security guard's attention through the bedroom window and he told us he had been suspicious and was following the man for a while. I really wish my dog was here. He's bored and because of our night out, he would have scared the guy away with his barks. Update. My boyfriend discovered marks on our door frame, indicating that the guy had been messing with our lock to open it. Looks like he went for the latch bolt, which doesn't have a lock. There appears to be no interference with the deadbolt. I'm a 21 year old female. I live with my grandparents in a large city on a busy road. I was just in bed when I heard the doorbell ring and was about to go answer it, but my grandpa got to the door before me. I am now so glad that he did. I couldn't see the front door from the hallway, but when he opened it, I heard a woman say, Hi, my name is Taylor. I think I know you. I didn't recognize the name and my grandpa didn't either because he told her that he definitely didn't know her. He asked her how he could help her, and I heard him open the door wider and then her quick footsteps as she ran away. After she left, I came out and asked my grandpa what happened. He told me about the interaction with a puzzled look, and I immediately recognized it as suspicious. We have a ring doorbell, so we pulled up the video it had taken. It showed a young woman covered with tattoos approaching her yard. As she walks up, she whistles loudly to someone off camera. I watch as my grandpa opens the door and she says that she thinks she knows him. Now my grandpa, a retired police officer, and tonight he happened to be wearing his t-shirt with the name of our city's police department on it. When he opens the door wider, she must have noticed his shirt because her eyes widened and she runs away. I watch as the video shows her holding up her arms, crossed in an X while she runs away. A few seconds later, a man crawls out from behind the car parked outside and follows her. Then the woman can be heard whistling again as they walk down the block. My grandpa called the non-emergency police line to report suspicious activity and two officers arrived 15 minutes later to hear our statements and watch the video. They seem to agree that the users are probably two addicts working together, casing out the neighborhood to see which houses they could break into. Since there was no proof of a crime committed, the officer gave us an email to send the video to and left. I can't help but wonder what would have happened if I, a 5 foot 3, 100 pound, 21 year old young woman, had been the one to answer the door. Instead of my grandpa, a 6'2", ex-military, retired police officer. So sketchy couple lurking around the neighborhood. Let's not meet. When I was little, my mom always opened up the front screen door in the summer. It's something she always did as we lived in a rural, mostly safe area. It was old and never locked, almost never shut all the way. The dogs always escaped out of it. The room that connected to this door was the middle room with a desk computer in it. One day I was looking for art supplies in that room. Front door opened to the screen. I remember I was looking for a few minutes. My mom was in the kitchen. I kept looking and looking, turned around to look somewhere else. 
There is this burly, gristly looking man standing there. I had never seen him before. He must have been staring for a while. When I saw him, he stayed put, still, silent. No knock, no asking for my mother, no hello. I hadn't heard any crunching of the gravel from the car pulling in. Where did he come from? I ran to the kitchen and told my mom that there was a guy standing there. She walked out cautiously. I saw and heard her speak briefly through the screen. Then she shut the front door and locked it. She never talked about it to me, even when I asked questions. And as an adult, she doesn't seem to remember what I remember so vividly, at all. I still mull over, why was he there? Where was his car? Why would he be walking in a rural area with no sidewalks? Why was he silently watching me so close to the door? How long was he there for? What was he planning? Why our house and not the neighbors? I don't know, but I'm glad I turned around when I did. Context. I was living in the Fiji Islands back in 2016, and I was 14 years old. This story happened to my family, but mainly my mom lived it. It was on the 31st of October, and I was at my school for a Halloween-based party, and my parents and my little sister had gone to a family friend's Halloween party, so the house was empty. My party finished at 9pm and my dad picked me up and dropped off my mom's sister at the house because our security alarm was ringing. Because nobody was home, my family obviously called the security company over and they sent a van with three security guards. My mom opens the house and lets everyone in. They check the whole house and they see no one. My mother checks all the cupboards and under the bed with my little sister who's only 12 at the time. The security guards go outside in the garden and in the basement to check if anyone has been there and it's not an accidental ring. We don't have any pets. My mom turns on all the lights in the living room and the balcony. She starts to open a window and the gates that protect all the windows to get to the balcony when she looks at the keyhole to put it in and she knows flip flops on the floor. She then looks closer and sees that there's two pairs of legs hiding real close to each other against the wall underneath the garden sofa. My mom yells out of her lungs. They're on the balcony. They're on the balcony. The two guys got scared and jumped off the balcony into the garden. One of the guards grabbed the guy, but the second intruder jumps onto the guard and they run away, jumping over the fence and running into the forest. My mother regrets yelling and that if she would have came down and talked to the security guards quietly, the guys wouldn't have ran and probably would have been caught. My mother is crying and holding my sister to the side and telling her everything would be okay. The security guards then called the police and they did report and describe the guys and started to search for them. The cops were here in about a minute since I live about 100 meters from the closest police station. The guy who jumped lost his hat. There were also flip flops and they left socks to use as gloves and two knives. Also, one of the thieves legit shit in our garden. Sadly, the guys were never found, but two weeks later, my mom pulls out of the driveway, looks in the rear mirror of her car, and sees what she's 90% sure of, the two guys at the opposite house staring at her. The short one had the same new hat, and the other guy had brand new flip-flops. When my mom drove away to the police station, the guys were gone and never to be found again. I got home after with my dad to find my mom and my sister crying. My dad was mad that he didn't stay, but my mom had drank and could not drive. Luckily, my mom saw them before she opened the window. Otherwise, what could have happened? Now, how did the two guys get on the balcony? Well, it's going to sound stupid, but right next to the balcony where they were hiding are like two wooden poles linked with a weird plank. My dad asked the landlord to get rid of it, but the landlord did not want to. To give you more about this pole thingy, me at 15, I could jump and climb onto the balcony because I did it to sneak out of the house to go see my girlfriend at the time. 
I am now 21 and live in Australia. And even though I did not live this myself, it made me really scared because I was young and now I live alone and have to check the entirety of my house to make sure the house is always locked to the point that I lock myself out of the house way too many times. I'm a woman in my 30s who lives alone in a small house at the end of a quiet cul-de-sac in the UK. The street is a maze of rows away from the main road, which means that other than delivery drivers and the occasional salesperson, you very rarely see anyone that you don't recognize. I don't exactly know all my neighbors, but I know what they look like, and I know where they live. I can recognize their cars, etc. The weirdness happened over a space of a few months, several years back. I work from home, so I'm usually in, and sometimes I don't have a lot to do. The first day was one of those lazy days. It was about 4pm, and I'm sitting on my sofa watching some daft shit about alien cover-ups. Someone knocked on my door. I have a surveillance camera hidden in a wooden canopy above the front door. So I checked to see who it was because I wasn't expecting any deliveries and I couldn't be bothered to deal with a salesperson. It was a woman who looked to be in her late 40s to early 50s, very smartly dressed, like really expensive clothes and jewelry. Stuff I could never afford. Most people around here generally couldn't afford it either. We are not in an affluent area, and this lady stuck out like a sore thumb. She looked flustered and agitated, glancing towards the back garden before trying to look through the teeny, frosted glass window on the front door. I noticed that she was carrying a dog lead, but I didn't see a dog. As it happens, at the far side of my back garden, there are two hedges. There's the hedges that I own within my property boundaries. And there's a second hedge outside of my boundary that's council owned along a small grassland where people walk their dogs. I know for a fact that there's a hole in the council owned hedges, which I've reported to the council at least a dozen times over the past decade. And they've done the square root of sod all about it. Because of my hedge, I can't reach it to do anything about it myself. Consequently, when I saw the dog's lead, I thought, shit. A better dog has gone through the hole. If it's a big dog, it's not getting into my garden, but if it's a small dog, it might be able to work its way through. And I've always had some cooked meat, so I figured I might be able to lure it out. I'm a dog lover, so of course, I wanted to help this woman if I could. When I was a kid, my dog went missing for a few weeks, and I thought I was never going to get it back. I was heartbroken for those weeks, but fortunately, we did get him back. And ever since then, I've been extremely sensitive to pets in need. I open the door and this woman gives me the weirdest look. Like she's expecting someone completely different to answer the door. And that I shouldn't be there. To be fair to her, my mom used to live here. So I don't think too much of the weird look to begin with. Maybe she's expecting my mom. I say, hello? And she stares at me for the longest 30 seconds before she tries to look past me. And asks to see Margaret. I don't know what it is about other people's mistakes, but whenever someone has the wrong number, I always end up apologizing as if it's my fault. So that's what I did. Apologized and told her that there was no Margaret at this address. Again, she gives me that look. Only this time, there's anger behind it. Yes, there is, she insists. It occurs to me at this point that I have a relative called Margaret but she lives about 60 miles away and I haven't seen her in years. Nonetheless, just in case she's got her addresses muddled, I asked, are you looking for Margaret Smith? But she hisses at me. You know exactly who I'm looking for. What have you done with her? I'm absolutely lost at this point. I've lived here for 20 years and I know the name of the previous owner, so I know she's not asking for them. I also know the names of the neighbors and the names of the people who have lived on the street in the time I've been here and since moved. None of them are called Margaret, so all I can do is tell her that she's got the wrong address. No, this is, and then she says my address. You're lying. That was a tad alarming. She's at the right address, 
She's not knocked on the wrong door. However, she clearly thinks I've done something to someone who, to my best knowledge, has never lived here. I don't know how long the previous owner had this house, but we must be talking about at least 30 years since anyone called Margaret might have lived here. It's at this point that I noticed that she subtly wrapped that dog lead around her now clenched fist like she was planning to use it as a weapon. In my youth, I did plenty of self-defense training, so I'm not exactly scared of her, but I'm obviously getting a bit concerned about the situation that's brewing. I don't particularly wish to get involved in a brawl on my doorstep with a complete stranger. I'm torn between shutting the door in her face or trying to de-escalate the situation. In the end, I close the door a little so she gets less to aim at and tell her, Look, I don't know who you're looking for, but if you think something happened to your friend, maybe you should call the police and let them sort it out. Sure enough, the woman slams her fist with a lead around it into my door. I later discovered she struck the door hard enough to crack the frosted glass window in the middle of it. She's bleeding from doing it. It must have hurt. But she didn't flinch or show any sign of pain. What the hell? Any confidence I had in my self-defense classes started to waver because I'm not used to people who don't feel pain. All I can think now is that she's on something and having a really bad trip. So at this point, I put on my scariest voice and tell her, Get the fuck back. I let her know that I'm calling the police and if she's still here when they get there, she can deal with them because I'm not dealing with her anymore. She tries to stop me from closing the door, but I shove her back and manage to close it and lock it. I make it a point to stand next to the door while I'm calling 911 so she can hear me. While I'm waiting for the police to turn up, I watch her on the surveillance feed. She moves out of shot multiple times, presumably to check the back of the house, and I hear her calling out for Margaret. A few minutes before the police turn up, I see her kick over my wheelie bins in rage, but then the most chilling thing happens. She walks back to the front door and literally stares directly into my camera. That camera is very well hidden. I'm not saying that nobody could spot it. But most people would only know it's there if they had been looking for it. Most people aren't looking for cameras, right? She knew it was there. She must have eyeballed it previously. When? I don't know. I later reviewed all the footage I had that day, and she never made eye contact with it once. She never even looked in that direction. I only had about a week's worth of footage before the oldest footage was overwritten and I checked everything I had, and she was only on camera that day. All I could think is that she had been there the week prior. While she's staring right at it, she flips me the finger and makes a throat cutting gesture before walking off. I head to the window to watch her leave, and she's walking like she doesn't have a care in the world. She doesn't look back, just wanders away. Police finally showed up. Good job, luckily I wasn't being murdered. They take my statement, I give them a copy of the surveillance footage, and that's that. I called a couple times to follow up, but nothing. Nobody called me about it. I won't lie, this messed me up for a few weeks. I moved the knife block closer to the door, though out of sight of any of the windows. I started staying up really late and not getting much sleep, which really didn't help. On some nights, I was so tired I started experiencing auditory hallucinations. I heard people talking who weren't there, and because this woman was the cause of all my stress, I heard her voice and the name Margaret most of all. Every time I heard the gate open, it put me on edge. I'd review the surveillance footage every day. Eventually, as the weeks passed and I hadn't heard anything else, I started to regain some of my comfort and just put it down to a weird experience. It didn't last. About four, maybe five weeks after the first encounter, she came back. It was just after midnight. I was in my living room mucking around on my phone with the TV on low volume for some background noise. I heard a car door slam and peeked out the front window. A dark colored car was parked at the end of my driveway. I couldn't see what make or model it was, but it looked like some sort of estate car. I think Americans call them station wagons, 
right? I didn't see anyone moving about, but a minute or two later, the front gate swung open with a metallic groaning and there was a knock on my door. Even when I'm not involved in the blood feud over imaginary Margaret's, I'm not going to answer the door at this time. I checked the surveillance camera. It's night vision mode is pretty shitty, but I'm positive it's the woman again. I can see what I think is the dog lead, and of course, she knows I'm watching her because she looks right at the camera again. And I tell you, when someone has already given you the heebie-jeebies, the way the night vision makes people's eyes look like soulless black voids doesn't do much to make you feel better. Suddenly, she yells out, Shut that fucking racket off and come out here now. I had the TV on, but as I mentioned, it was on a very low volume. There was no way that she could hear it from outside the front door. I couldn't even hear it as I walked into the hallway. I'm convinced at this point that she's mentally unwell, so I call the police again. I want them to stay on the line, but they just tell me that someone will be over soon and to call them back immediately if things escalate. So I'm waiting, watching, and just hoping that she doesn't try to smash the window open or something. She kicks over my wheelie bin again, don't know what she has against them, and yells something else, which I couldn't quite make out, but whatever it was, it was enough for one of my neighbors to come and investigate themselves. I watch the neighbor talking to her for a minute. She's remonstrating about something, wagging her finger towards my door, but my neighbor is eventually able to get her to leave. He even sticks around for a bit to make sure she's gone. Sadly, that also means she was gone before the police turned up again and made me feel like I was a bother to them. Another statement, handing over more security footage, more nothing. I caught up with a neighbor the next day and he apologized because it didn't occur to him to make note of the registration plate. But he also told me that she said much of the same thing that she had said to me previously. That she wanted to know where Margaret was and what I've done with her. I'm grasping for answers at this point. Even if she's mentally unwell, the fact that she's sticking to this Margaret story and has the right address makes me think that there's something more to this than someone having a breakdown. Then it clicks. Is Margaret her dog? Does she think that I've stolen her dog? Does she think that her dog went through the hole in the back? Does she think I've hurt her dog? Is that what this is about? It'd be another few weeks before she came back. This time at 3 a.m., I am awoken up by knocking at the door. A few minutes later, I hear tapping on my bedroom window. I know it's her. I can hear her saying things but I can't really make them out because it's too muffled through the windows. It's like she didn't want to get the neighbors out again, and she's trying to keep quiet. I jump out of bed and put some clothes on as quickly as I can. I try to follow her as best as I can as she moves around the outside of my house from room to room knocking, tapping, and muttering. I think I hear a few coherent words like noise, racket, and I'm pretty sure she called me a bitch but maybe I'm imagining that. I can't check the surveillance footage this time because she spray painted the damn lens. Not that it mattered much this time. She's not lingering by the front door. I think about calling the police again, but it's proven to be a waste of time so far. And I get a feeling if I call them a third time and she's gone, they're just going to start accusing me of wasting their time, even though I do have evidence. They've not exactly been helpful so far. In the end, I wait by the front door and listen to her. Eventually, she knocks again, and I call out, Is Margaret your dog? Dead silence. Nothing. I can't see anything through the frosted glass because it's too dark. I have no idea where she is. I don't want to turn the outside light on. I don't even know why. She knows I'm in the house because I called out to her, but I still didn't want to draw any more attention to myself. I end up standing there for who knows how long, at least an hour, probably more because the sun starts coming up. My heart is going a mile a minute pretty much the whole time. Once it's bright enough, I start checking through the windows to see if I can see her. Nope, nothing. I cautiously open the front door and look outside. Still can't see her. I grab something to arm myself with, just in case. Can't remember what now 
and check all around my house and the back garden. She's not there. As I'm heading back to the front door, I spot the oddest thing. The gate's closed. That gate is physically attached to the side of my house, and when it opens and closes, it makes a fair bit of noise. You definitely hear if someone opened or closed it when you were standing next to the front door, but it's closed. So what does that mean? Did she jump over it somehow? It's possible, I guess, but I wouldn't want to try it. Anyway, I open the gate and head out to the end of the driveway. I look around and there's no sign of anyone. I turn back to my house to see spray painted liar on the front of my house and the dog lead on the floor beneath it. That was, thankfully, the last time I heard from or saw this woman, but I still think she comes by sometimes. Ever since this all happened, I get the creeped out feeling occasionally at night and check out the windows. I don't know whether I'm imagining it or what, but now and again, I swear I see a dark colored estate car out on the street, not parked at the end of my driveway these days, but I just can't shake the feeling that she's there, watching my house, perhaps she's looking for her dog and she keeps thinking that she'll see me with it. While I was living and studying in the capital of my country, I had a small rented basement of a house built in 1917 next to a nightclub. I was preparing to go to sleep quite early since I had class at 8 a.m. the next day. Right before I fell asleep, I remembered that I forgot to lock the door. But since the city I lived in was generally quite safe, and the only way to get to the entrance of my place was past the front gate, all around to the other side of the house and down some stairs, I didn't think much of it and proceeded to fall asleep. Skip forward to the middle of the night. I wake up and feel something or someone slowly pulling my blanket off of me. In a confused state, I extend my hand and feel a hairy, male arm under my fingers. My first thought was, Oh, this is probably my drunk flatmate. But then I remembered that he was at his girlfriend's place on the other side of town. In pitch black, I jump out of my bed, rush to the light switch, and as I turn it on, I find a stranger around my age, standing in his underwear by my bed, with his underwear clearly wet from piss. My initial reaction was to stay calm since I had no idea if this dude was violent or what was even going on in the first place. I calmly asked him, Man, what the fuck are you doing here? He was clearly very confused as well and sat on the recliner I had in my tiny room. And there we were, both in our underwear, him covered in piss and I on the border of pissing myself. And what does he do? He extends his hand and introduces himself to me. At this point, I go, Okay, dude, get out of my house and start escorting him to the hallway where I find his clothes and shoes on the floor. As I'm escorting him out, he goes into the bathroom and locks himself inside. I hear him turn on the shower and I proceed to knock on the door saying, Hey man, if you don't leave right now, I'm calling the cops. To which he replies, I'm not afraid of the police. Well, that's just perfect, isn't it? A few minutes pass and he steps out of the bathroom butt naked with my flatmate's towel around his waist. Looks at me kind of content and says, Hey, did you see? They've got a shower in there. At this point, I am fuming. Who's got a shower, asshole? This is my house. You're a total stranger and you broke into my place. Suddenly, an expression of complete fear appears on his face. Oh my God. What have I done? Jesus Christ, he starts exclaiming as he is very awkwardly trying to get dressed in the hallway. Then I managed to get him out of my house. I even called one of my friends from my phone to pick him up at the club. Turns out he's from a completely other town and came to party at the Capitol. Got kicked out of the club for starting a fight and somehow managed to get into my place. To this day, I have no idea what he was on, how the hell he managed to find my apartment, as it's quite hidden from the street. Anyway, I apologize for a long post. I'm not even sure if this is the right place to post it, but I found it extremely creepy.
Let's just say I'll never forget to lock my door from that day on. I didn't sleep well for weeks after. Oh, I should add that I actually found the dude on Facebook a while later. Turns out, we have a mutual friend. I'm a female. I was 13 at the time, but looked more like a 10-year-old. My grandma lives two states away and discovered she had stage 4 cancer. My mom picked my sisters and I up and drove us there while my dad stayed at home for work. We were there for three months. My aunt and uncle lived in the same city as my grandma, and me and my sister would frequently spend the night at one of my aunt's houses. One day, I was making lunch for my grandma when my uncle walked into the kitchen. He suddenly shouted and rushed out the back door. I caught a glimpse of a man in a red baseball hat running from the kitchen window. He had been watching me. My uncle claimed that he didn't catch him. We found two piles of cigarette butts in the backyard, one by the kitchen window and one by the bathroom window. Yeah, my grandma didn't have blinds or curtains on any of the windows besides her bedroom window. Needless to say, I was horrified. Fast forward a few days and my mom was certain who the peeping Tom was. My grandma's neighbor who always wore a red baseball hat and had suddenly became smoking buddies with my uncle. We couldn't prove anything because my uncle backed him up and we didn't want my grandma to be distressed, so we let it go. A couple days later, I was spending the night at one of my aunt's houses while my sister was at the other aunt's house. It was just my cousin and I there while my aunt was at the store. I heard a car door and peeked out the window to see if it was my aunt, but I saw a man standing at the end of the empty driveway. He wore a red baseball hat, pulled over his eyes. My uncle had told him where I was. I freaked. I locked the doors and told my cousin to call her mom. She was on her way home, but the man was already gone. After that, I never left my mom's side. I stayed every night at my grandma's house. My dad flew up soon after. And that was the end of the incidents with my grandma's neighbor. There was now a man in the house. And if my dad left to go to the store or something, he took me with him. It's been 14 years and many disturbing things have come to light. My uncle was a predator and one of my sisters was one of his victims. My aunt knew and covered it up for him. The sister of mine, she's running the streets using hard drugs to self-medicate, and her son was taken away from her. My parents are absolutely devastated, and the guilt eats away at my mom every day. So for some context, I'm a 26-year-old female, and I also currently live with a female roommate who hasn't been here a lot due to the fact that she's been staying with her boyfriend. We've only been living here for about six months, so a pretty good while, but not years. I feel safe in this house, but it all changed a few nights ago when I was there alone. The doors were locked, thank God, but I was in the kitchen, and in the kitchen there's a window above our sink that looks into the back of our property, and there's just straight up woods in the back of our house, so we never bothered on getting a curtain for our kitchen window because nothing was back there. It just hasn't seemed like a priority. So I'm in the kitchen making ramen on the stove, which was right next to the sink, and I hear something outside the window. I look out there, and there's a man standing there looking at me. Obviously, he ran away, but I didn't know if he was trying to get in or what. I called the police, then my father. The police were nice, but because he was gone by the time they arrived, they couldn't do much. I have cameras for the sides in front of my house and they told me to get one in the back and if he comes back to call them and they'll handle it. I'm not staying here anymore. I ordered a ring from Amazon, set it up, and I've been watching it while staying at my family's for a week. I don't know when I'll feel safe enough to return. I'm really scared.
Hey everyone, I don't post much on Reddit, but I need to get out what just happened a few hours ago. This seemed like a place to put it. For some background first, I'm a 29 year old woman. I live in an apartment in a sketchier side of my town. So I'm not unaccustomed to strange people pulling up and strange things happening. I've been through a home break-in, so I'm very hyper-vigilant when it comes to keeping myself and my home safe. I also smoke cigarettes. Nasty habit, I know. But having cats and not wanting my house to reek like smoke, I walk out to my balcony to smoke. That's exactly what I was doing when this happened. I was sitting on my balcony, smoking, and just enjoying the night when I noticed a car I've never seen before pull into the back parking lot of my apartments right by my balcony. I initially felt a bit off, but I didn't want to come off as being a paranoid neighbor, so I keep sitting and smoking my cigarette. Then I hear footsteps making a beeline through my backyard. There's a large burly man that I've never seen before walking briskly through my backyard. Again, I still don't try to make much of it because they might be there for my neighbor. My anxiety was definitely on alert, but not in panic mode until I realized that he was going straight to the portion of my backyard. Then he does something that's still freaking me out as I type this. He stops right in my backyard and looks up at me on the balcony, not saying a word. Now I'm in absolute panic mode. I audibly say, Oh, fuck no. Spring up, slam and lock the balcony door, run to my upstairs bathroom, and dial 911. I listened to every sound downstairs while I'm panicking in the bathroom, and it truly sounded like someone was messing with my back door. I don't know for sure, but I was hyper vigilant. I don't know if he was in my backyard for a few minutes because I was in my bathroom for several minutes until I decided to peek out the balcony window. I saw him walking to his car and getting in. That also tells me that I don't think he was here to rob me, but something more sinister. Luckily, he was lazy because, again, I live on a cheaper side of town, so I can imagine the quality of my doors and locks. I'm really hoping that it was just some guy who was drunk or high and had the wrong house, but my gut is telling me otherwise. When I was a senior in college a few years ago, I lived in an old house about a five minute walk from campus with five girlfriends. It was still COVID times, so we spent a lot of time in the house since we really couldn't go elsewhere. To preface, this house was old and many of the windows didn't lock. Our landlord sucked, as many college ones do, and did nothing to fix this issue. But with it being six of us, and often a boyfriend or two sleeping in the house, it felt mostly safe, and most of us kept our windows open. Our college town is in a town just outside the second most dangerous city in the state, but right around the campus is relatively safe. When the weather started getting warmer in early spring, we would sit out on the roof to sunbathe, and this roof faced the street. We would access the roof from my roommate's, let's call her Mary, bedroom window on the second floor, since it led straight to the roof. Our street was residential and didn't get much traffic, but we did have a couple encounters of younger guys catcalling us as I drove by, but nothing seemed sinister as we were college kids. One night, late in the semester, Mary went up to her room to call her brother while the rest of us were hanging out downstairs. That's when she rushed downstairs and said that she saw a ladder leading up to the roof where we would all sunbathe right near her window, which was open. Later, we learned she said out loud to her brother what she saw before she came down. When she told us, many of the roommates and her boyfriend ran outside to find the man running away from the house with a freaking ladder, who we assumed heard Mary tell her brother she saw a ladder and knew he was caught. It was dark, so they couldn't make out anything about him. I immediately texted our landlord, asking if he had came by to the house to do any work, and he said no. We called the police who came by. 
They did some investigating and patrolled around our house a couple nights, but we never found out who the man was, what his intentions were, or if he had done it before. So to the creep with the ladder, let's not meet. My mother worked long shifts at the airport seven days a week, so me, 12, female, and my younger sister, 10, were at home by ourselves a majority of the time. For reference, we lived in a house that had gates on the windows and a gated door that you had to unlock to get to the actual front door. It was late at night, around 10 p.m., and me and my sister were watching TV and preparing for bed. I noticed some sounds coming from the front door and realized it was someone banging on the gate. I was naive back then and decided to open the door to see who it was. It was a young white man in his late 20s. He had on a black and white striped shirt with a jean jacket. I asked him what he needed and he sat there with a blank face and calmly said that he needed me to let him in. I asked him why and he repeated himself and said, let me in, I'm in trouble. He kept looking over his shoulder and I felt a bit unnerved and decided not to unlock the gate for him. As soon as I made the decision not to let him in, the police showed up and pulled out their guns. They gave him directions to walk backwards with his hands up, and at the moment, I decided now was a good time to close the door. I quickly realized that he may have been running from the police for a crime he committed. Till this day, I wonder what would have happened if I opened the door and let him in. Creepy. So about four years ago, I was living with an ex-boyfriend, we'll call him Useless Prick, and his aunt, Pill Popper Pam, and her boyfriend, Loser Len. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I had to pee. Useless Prick was asleep in the bed when I got up. I walked across the house and Pill Popping Pam's door was open. She and Loser Len were both passed out. I made my way sleepily to the bathroom and saw the light was on. Since I knew everyone was asleep, I assumed one of them left the light on and opened the door. I was wrong. I saw multiple things in a few seconds. The first thing I remember is that it smelled like horrible shit and that someone had just taken a shower based on the steam. Secondly, there were clothes folded up into squares, organized on the ground. There was a man on the toilet. I, having manners and very much still half asleep, jumped and apologized and closed the door. I panicked and went to my room and tried to wake up useless prick, but he was, of course, useless. I text Pill Popper Pam and said, Hey, there's a man in our bathroom. She texted back, I know, it's okay. He's a friend of mine. This calmed me down, and I messaged back something like, Okay, thanks, just checking. And she said, No problem, go back to sleep. And I did. The next day, I bring it up when everyone is around. Pill Popper Pam said she never texted me. She was high on pills and passed out cold, and she would never allow a friend to come in like that. And it sounded like a homeless man who walked the street constantly. He had used her phone. I will add that her phone was plugged in and sitting on the ground about two feet away from the bedroom door next to their bed. When we talk about if he could have texted from it, she said that she didn't have a passcode on her phone. Years ago when I was 11, I was staying home alone with my little brother who was 7. At the time, it was about 9 p.m., dark and pouring rain. We were reading in our room, right next to the front door, with a big window and open blinds. That's when I hear the front door bell ring, followed by knocking. I thought my parents had arrived. Strange, though, that they didn't use the garage or their keys. I looked outside to see if their car was there. Nothing but rain. As I approached the door... I hear a man's voice that was not my father's yell. Would you like some cookies? We're selling Girl Scout cookies. 
I'm shocked at this, considering the weather and time of day. Saying nothing, I check the peephole and peer through the side window, only to see that it's not a father with a girl, as I expected. My heart dropped, standing there, was just a fully grown man in his late 50s, no box of cookies in sight, soaking on my doorstep. I can remember the gut-wrenching feeling of having to check the locks while he was right on the other side. For sure, he heard us. The two locks were the only thing separating myself and brother from a potential monster. He continued to knock and mention his cookies, as I considered calling the cops. That's when I remembered the blinds were open in my room where my brother was with the light on. As I turned the corner into the doorway, I could see the man carefully peering into the window, possibly eyeing my brother, who was distracted by a book. My heart was pounding now as I began to panic. In a move that took all my willpower, I quickly turned off the lights and ran to the window to close the blinds in full view of the man as fast as I could. I double-checked all the locks in the house closed all the blinds, and told my brother to hang out in one of the biggest closets in the interior of the house. I didn't tell him what was going on, so he wouldn't be frightened. And for some reason, I never did call the cops or my parents. I just waited in the hallway until he left. Thinking about this still gives me shivers that so many things could have gone wrong that night. My worst fear sense is a stranger getting to the unlocked door before I do. My mom had left me and my brother home alone. It was midday. My brother was 12, maybe 13, so I would have been around 9 years old. I was watching him play Xbox in our living room. He had his headset on, talking to his friends. Then there was a knock on our front door in our carport. I run and answer the door without looking. It's a grown man I'd never seen before. We are only separated by the screen door, which is unlocked all the time. He asked, Are your parents home? Horror washes over me. First of all, he's knocking from a carport, which is strange in itself. A stranger would knock on the front door, and our carport is empty. We only had one car, and my mom had taken it. This man knows that my parents aren't home. I'm afraid, I don't know why, but I'm scared. Immediately, my brother in the other room comes to mind. I never had a father figure. My brother has always been the one who makes me feel safe. The strongest person in the whole world. Someone who can protect me in any situation. How most people regard their father, I think. I feel as though I can barely speak. Wide-eyed, I manage to stutter out. N no, but my big brother's here. Without even a moment's pause, the man reaches for the screen door and starts to open it. Like an act of God, divine intervention, an arm reaches out from behind me, over my shoulder, and grabs the door. My brother pushes past me, holding the door, forcing the man back with his presence, out the carport, and he closes the door behind him. The man tells my brother he's looking to buy the shitty swing set that was in their front yard at the time. My brother comes back in without saying anything to me, puts on his headset, and continues playing. I sit down as well and continue watching him. I don't believe we ever told our mom. Luckily, we never encountered that person again, and it pretty much fades away in my memory. But as I got older, it became one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. Creepy, not so much of what happened, but what could have. Unnerving how absolutely oblivious we were. I like to think the man was planning to lock me in the room, rob the place and leave. But people can be so evil. This occurred to my wife and I right before I left the Marines. After leaving the military, I was obsessed with jogging, hiking. I liked pushing myself to see how much weight I could carry and how far I could run and hike. Every Sunday morning at 5 a.m., my wife would drive me eight miles from our apartment. I would road march with a heavy pack through town back home. 
This particular Sunday was very warm. She dropped me off at the location. We said our goodbyes and she returned to the apartment. It's not terribly dangerous where we live, but having done some combat deployments, I was always aware of my surroundings. Therefore, I was carrying my handgun that was typically located in our bedroom. When my wife returned to the apartment, she noticed that there was a little white Honda parked near the front of our unit, which was not there before. She thought it was odd because it was so early on a Sunday morning. She thought about not getting out of her car because she was a little creeped out. She decided to go in but walk quickly. She got back into bed and tried to get some sleep while I hiked home. Our apartment was a ground level unit and there was a large bush located in front of our window with gravel surrounding it. As she laid in bed, she heard some slight shifting of gravel. She lay there silently listening. Then she heard heavy breathing, which she said sounded like it was someone with her lips right on our window. Due to the heat, our window was open, but there was still a screen and large drapes. My wife lay there silently for several minutes while the breathing continued. I don't know what came over her, but she got ballsy. She jumped up out of bed and threw the drapes open. She saw a grown man standing there who immediately turned around the corner of the wall out of view. She didn't say anything to this man, but she could see his shadow from the light above the door to the unit next to ours. The man stood there, still breathing heavily. She described it as almost intentionally loud. In a flash, the man took off in a dead sprint for the white Honda. My wife said she had no idea what to do because she was so terrified that he would return. She knew I had the gun, so she grabbed the K-bar, the large military-style fixed blade knife that I kept underneath the mattress. She waited for about five minutes before running out of the house and getting into her car. She drove the route I had told her I would be taking and found me. I remember it so clearly because my wife's car pulled up and she was bawling and had the large knife in her hands. She explained everything. She drove me home. I called the police on the way. We arrived and the white Honda was gone. The police reported that they had received reports of suspicious activity happening recently in the early mornings. He was never caught to my knowledge. It creeps me out to this day that that someone is still out there, probably getting brazen every time he gets away with something. So this happened to our neighborhood when I was about 10. We lived in a super nice subdivision on the ridge near a marina. The houses were not right on top of each other due to how the land was and our house was one of those ones that was not right next to the other houses. Our house backed up to a lot of woods that I used to play in. Our neighborhood was plagued one year by a peeping tom. My mom had talked to some of the neighbors and several people had noticed a guy creeping about in backyards or looking through windows. One neighbor said that her and her husband had another couple over for dinner and when the ladies went out to the backyard down to the woodpile to get more firewood, they noticed a man standing just outside the woods staring at them. They ran to get their husbands, but he was gone at that point. So we were all on the lookout. One night, I was in bed, and my bed was opposite to the window in the room. Our house was mostly on ground level, but my bedroom window was higher up from the ground. However, there was a little ledge under the window. I used to use that ledge to climb in and out of my window for fun. I even put a slide under the window once and slid out of my window. So one night, I'm in bed, and I wake up for some reason. I look out the window, and the floodlights were on in the backyard. I clearly see an outline of a man's shoulder and head in the window, like he was standing on the ledge, just looking in. I scream and get my parents, and of course, by the time we get back, he's gone. My mom tended to believe me, but my dad said I just dreamt it. I made my dad search the entire huge house before I would go back to sleep. The reports came in from the neighbors that the boats down the marina 
were getting broken into. My guess is the peeping Tom was breaking into the boat for food or to sleep. Well, it all came to a head one night, and we were the family that got the worst of it. Our house was like one level and had a basement. Well, the master bedroom had these huge windows that went all the way to the ground. They could be opened and just have a screen. You just turn a handle and they open out. My parents were lax in security and would leave the dang windows open while they slept if the weather was nice. So my dad was gone at night, which was not abnormal for him. He was gone at night a lot, which perhaps the peeping Tom knew if he had been watching us. My mom was asleep in her bed, which was right next to one of the big fold-out windows, which were open. She likes to sleep with the TV on. She said she kept hearing leaves crunching, and she thought it must have been something on the TV. Then she finally realized that sound was coming from outside the window, literally a foot and a half away. She jumped out of bed and ran to turn on the floodlights, and there in front of the window was the outline of a man. Literally, all that the guy had to do was kick the screen in and step down into the house. It was that simple. We had an alarm system, so my mom runs to hit the panic button and the alarm goes off. She said the guy bolted. I was asleep in my bed while it was going on and wake up to hear the alarm and the cops arriving shortly after. The cops were too lazy to go into the woods to look for him and he had ran into the woods behind our house. They did take an unmarked car and drive it around to the other side of the woods to see if they could catch him when he came out the other side. But of course they never found him. But maybe almost getting caught was enough for him to stop because after that night the peeping Tom was never seen again in our neighborhood. I suppose he moved on, but not before he literally scared the living daylights out of my mother and me. The lesson of this incident has taught me to never sleep with my windows open, ever. So about 12 years ago, I was 9 years old. I was home alone with my 12 year old brother. We were supposed to go to my aunt's house to have lunch and wait for my mom there. We always did that because we were too young to stay home alone according to my mom. We got up at 10.30 a.m. I took a shower, then my brother. After that, we were both in the bathroom brushing our teeth and finishing up when we heard someone knocking on our door. Since every time someone knocked at our door, they turned out to be either salesmen or Jehovah's Witness, we kind of waited for them to just go away. After a couple of minutes, I went to see if they were still outside through the window and no one was there, which was a relief. We continued getting ready when we saw a shadow go by the bathroom window, which was kind of like a small square of glass that makes everything behind it blurry. We waited and looked just in case it was just a bird flying by when a hand hit it clear as day. We got scared. We didn't know what to do. My brother had his cell phone, so immediately called the police. While it was ringing, we heard a loud bang on the door. Someone was hitting it with brute force. I don't know if they were kicking or ramming it, but it was one of the most frightening things I had ever heard. My brother told me to lock the bathroom door, so I did. It took five bangs before the perpetrator was finally able to bash through the door. The police answered. I remember the exact thing my brother said. He was whispering. His voice could be barely heard. Hello? There's someone in our house. I think they're stealing. Then a pause. We are at. And then he says the address. Another pause. I'm with my little brother locked in our bathroom. Please hurry. While all that was happening, I was sitting against the wall hugging my knees. It was one of the most nerve-wracking experiences ever. I could hear the man going through all of our stuff, emptying stands, going up and down the stairs, opening cabinets. He even broke a few cups and plates. Don't know why. Then I heard the sound that my cell phone makes when it turns off and I remembered leaving it on the kitchen table. I felt so stupid for leaving it there. Things continued for a couple minutes when I heard him trying to open the door to the bathroom. My brother got a hold of a big metal rod that was laying in the bathroom. He started kicking the door. Who is there? The man screamed. We said nothing. 
another kick, then another. I felt I was about to have an anxiety attack. My chest started to ache. I had chills and it was really hot. I tried to remain calm, but it was just too much. After that, he stopped. We heard the door opening and then silence. We waited for almost 10 minutes before going out of the bathroom. The living room was a total mess. Lots of papers and books on the floor. The cabinets were open, cups and plates on the floor. In my mother's bedroom, the nightstand and closet were open and everything inside of it was all over the place. Upstairs in our room, it was the same thing. In about five minutes, this man was able to go through everything we had and leave it a total mess. After that, my brother called my mom and she just ordered us to go to my aunt's ASAP, so we did. When we got there, I was a little more relaxed. My aunt was waiting for us with ice cream, probably because my mom told her everything and she wanted to calm us down a bit. We went back home at 5 p.m. My mother had told her boss that she had a home emergency, so she left early. She tidied up the house, cleaned up everything, and left it the way it was before so we could be more relaxed. I really appreciated her and my aunt's effort to calm us down and do everything so we didn't have to think about it. According to my mom, the police arrived after she had arrived, which was 3 p.m., four hours after the incident. She explained everything, but because of lack of evidence, nothing could be done. The man was never caught and honestly, I don't think they even tried to search for him. The next few days, my mom was home with us. Luckily no one was hurt and he only took useless stuff, but at the time, I was really scared. To a 9 year old, an experience like that can lead to PTSD. I'm lucky it never came to that and I got over it after a couple weeks. So yeah, that's my story. Edit Many replies are related to the 4 hours it took police to get here. My house is located on the far side of the city, but also the police in my country suck. I'll try to be brief as possible and stick to the relevant events that gave me this feeling, but the latest event happened last night and I didn't get too much sleep, so I apologize if I ramble or am unclear. My wife and I recently purchased our first home after the birth of our daughter. Everything was as you would expect for the first few months, painting, decorating, renovating, basking in our newfound slice of the American dream. You get the idea. Unusual things started happening several months ago. One day, I was getting home after work. I passed by a strange truck two or three houses down from ours. I say strange for a few reasons. We know literally everyone in this small neighborhood and I've never seen this truck or person before. There's no reason for through traffic to come down our street and the truck was driving very slowly like put in drive and don't step on the gas slowly. As I pulled into the driveway, the truck flipped a U-turn and came back towards my house. Getting out of my car, the truck crawled by and the driver stared daggers at me as he passed, then sped off. I don't like to judge based on appearances and I like to think that I don't scare easily, but something about this guy's eyes gave me a bad feeling. Obviously, this was weird. I mentioned what happened to my wife, telling her that we should be more mindful about security. When I told her the type of truck, my wife said, That same truck drove by and the guy stared at me when I got home this afternoon. I thought he was just being creepy and checking me out. I tried to tease her a bit to lighten the mood, calling her cocky for assuming the guy driving by was checking her out. I didn't want to freak her out, but I was definitely freaked out. We saw the truck a few more times over the next couple weeks, either driving by slowly or parked down the block facing our yard. But one day the truck stopped driving by and we haven't seen it since. I sort of dismissed the whole thing as me being paranoid. Then other things started happening. In the past month or so, my wife and I have been hearing tapping on the windows at the front of our house at night. It's happened two or three times to each of us separately always around 10 or 11 p.m. and always a soft but distinct. 
Now, our house is older. Creaks and cracks are not uncommon, but this sound was so distinctly intentional that my wife and I immediately looked at each other and bolted up out of the room. I had my wife and daughter lock themselves in the bathroom while I turned on all the lights and did a sweep around the outside of the house. Of course, I didn't see anything and was ready to dismiss the whole thing as more paranoia over something that probably had an innocent explanation. Until last night, around 9.45, we heard our daughter making noise on the baby monitor. I waited a few minutes to see if she would settle down, but when it became clear that she wouldn't, I got up to put her back to sleep. The layout of the room is important to visualize this next part. This room is on the side of our house, but the exterior wall juts out a bit like an L shape, and the corner of the L is made of windows. If you're standing at the door to the room, you're directly across from these windows in one corner, and the rocking chair is in the other corner pointed towards the front of the house. One of the windows faces the street, and the other faces my neighbor's house. A garden bed planted with small shrubs wraps around the outside directly underneath. I was sitting in the chair getting my daughter settled down. I had the lamp on so the room was softly lit. Once she fell asleep, I stood up and put her in her crib when something caught my eye. There was a figure standing about a foot away from the window in a bare space between the shrubs and the house. They were staring at us. I didn't look long enough to see anything more than what appeared to be a man in a light gray hoodie standing a few feet away on the other side of the grass. Sprinting from the room, I brought my daughter back to my wife in our bedroom, leaving her there while telling my understandably confused wife to lock the door. After turning off all the lights inside the house and turning on all the lights outside, I began moving from room to room, peering out the windows into the darkness. I couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. Whoever it was must have taken off after seeing me notice them and made a quick exit. Obviously, I had some trouble sleeping after this. I spent hours checking security cameras and going from room to room looking out the windows into the night, hoping, but also not hoping, that I would see anything that could explain what happened. This morning, I went outside to the spot where the figure would have been standing. I thought, well, hoped, maybe there would be a plant or something that I mistook for a person. When I got to the spot, I realized the figure had been standing exactly in a bare patch of ground, about two feet in diameter, directly in front of the window. Part of me is still hoping that I'm being paranoid. The mind can play tricks in you in the dark, seeing things that aren't there especially when you're a sleep-deprived new parent. But with everything that's been happening, I can't shake the feeling that there was actually someone out there last night, watching us. Please let me be wrong. Update. Nothing happened last night. I expected that would be the case for a couple reasons. First, so far all these events had taken place a week or two apart. The tapping this weekend and seeing the figure two nights ago were the closest in time of any of them. Second, this person absolutely realized I saw them, so I wouldn't expect them to be so bold as they come back the very next night. I still stayed up and kept an eye out though. To address some of the common questions, comments, and advice, we own several guns. I am very well versed in gun safety and a pretty good shot if I'm going to brag on myself. Since we have a young child, I keep all the guns locked away, but after this past week, I've made sure to find places to store guns that are out of her reach, but within my reach for quickness. There are blinds, curtains, and solar screens on all the windows. The window in the story is dark, and the curtains were drawn over it that night. They're those semi-see-through white ones, so I didn't notice the blinds weren't drawn. All windows are checked and covered as soon as I get home from now on. All our exterior doors, deadbolts, and frames are reinforced. These are security measures put in by the previous owners that I thought were unnecessary, but I am now grateful for. Anybody that tries to kick their way in, 
The door will hold up long enough for me to get ready for them. I have purchased and installed additional exterior cameras with motion activated lights for the more remote corners of the property. Our neighbors have two very alert dogs that are out all night and they have been barking more often after dark the past few weeks, which is another reason we've been on edge. I took some pictures of the place where the person would have been standing and the view that they would have had inside the house. It got me spooked all over again for sure. This occurred back when I was maybe seven or eight years old. I lived with my parents and brother in a previously abandoned house across from a large park. I don't have a lot of definite information for what happened exactly, but I remember one night changing into PJs and getting a really creepy feeling out of nowhere. I glanced out the window out of habit, but I was on the second story so I brushed it off as anxiety or something I didn't yet understand, that is, until morning. I woke up to a very bright light igniting my room to find that we had gotten our first snowfall of the season. My brother and I just stared out the window as kids do until my dad walked up behind me to join us. My dad looked down and asked if we had gotten out the window the night before. I was confused. There was a screen on my window so I didn't even see how I could have accomplished that and I just said no. He didn't believe me and got angry, demanding I tell the truth which I insisted I already told him. He huffed and made heavy footsteps outside. Soon I saw my dad on the ledge outside my window looking at something. He reached down out of sight and pulled up a string of red Mardi Gras beads, glared at me and asked if I was sticking with my story. So I leaned out as much as I could to check out what he was so angry about and good lord I saw it. Next to and all around my window were crisp, new, size 10-ish boot prints tracking all the way from outside my window with the tracks mixed with that of the early joggers and dog walkers. It took me years to put it all together but that creepy feeling I had makes me think that my privacy was violated long before that morning discovery. Not a great start to Christmas, I will say that. This happened way back in 2017. I'm a female and was in fifth grade at the time. Me and my sister were sharing a room and we were just casually talking. She was in middle school at the time and I was in elementary. So keep in mind, I live in a two-story house. The rail that goes along the stairs is like a metal gate so you're able to see downstairs. At night, you can't see shit when you're looking downstairs. It's literally pitch black so all you can hear is movement. So that night, my sister and I were just hanging out and all of a sudden we hear a deep raspy voice that's coming from the dark and it said my sister's name. We completely froze. Then a couple seconds later, it said my sister's name again, but with more force in the voice. That's when me and my sister slammed and locked the door. My stomach turned so much and I had such a horrible feeling that I was gonna die. I always tell people it sounded like a clown that lost its voice. It was so raspy and scary and it didn't sound normal. The only people home were my aunt and cousin, but they were asleep and my mom's boyfriend had just left for work so me and my sister were the only ones awake so we knew someone was inside. It got so silent that we could hear the footsteps coming up the stairs and we freaked out especially since we didn't have anything to protect ourselves if something happened. I was on the phone with a 911 dispatcher while my sister was on the phone with my mom and my mom made me hang up on the dispatcher for whatever reason. Anyway, my mom's boyfriend gets here and not a single thing was moved. Everything was locked and to this day, I still truly believe someone was with us that night. I think about it every day. I truly thought I was going to die that night. I've been debating on whether to post this or not, but I finally decided that it's been long enough for me to talk about this. This happened to me and my mom a few months ago, back in October. It happened in a very rural part of New Hampshire on a side road type of neighborhood. It was pouring out as it had been raining for pretty much the whole day. 
My mom had just gotten back from down the street in my sister's car and I was on the couch in the living room when suddenly I heard the doorbell ring. Our front door is a big glass pane so we can look out from the inside and someone can look in from the outside. Through this window pane I see a man. I didn't get a great look at him as I didn't have my glasses on. The man noticed that I had seen him and waved as if he was trying to be friendly. For the rest of this post, I'll refer to him as Poncho Man. I got up and thought about opening the door for Poncho Man, but relented as I couldn't properly see who it was. I didn't want to let a stranger into the house. Instead, I went down the hall to my parents' bedroom where my mom was getting ready for work. She asked me what was up and I explained to her that there was a man in a poncho outside our door and wanted to talk to us. She went as white as a ghost. Immediately, she stopped getting ready, closed and locked the bedroom door, and started checking the windows to make sure they were locked. I asked her what was going on. My mom explained that as she was driving home, she had seen the poncho man. He had been standing motionless on the side of the main road. As soon as my mom turned down our road, he started to walk, presumably to follow her. She said the encounter was weird, but thought nothing more of it. Why would someone be out in the pouring rain down a back road in the afternoon? It was like he was waiting for something. I started to panic as well. My mom called my aunt. The two of them are like best friends and asked her what she should do. My aunt told her to call the police immediately and so we did. We proceeded to pace around the bedroom, frantically looking out the window to see if we could see Poncho Man. From where the bedroom was angled, it was impossible to look at the front porch and see if he was still there, but we were desperate for anything. After what felt like hours, we finally saw the police pull up. We carefully unlocked the door and went down to let the officer in. We explained what we saw and he agreed to scan around the neighborhood. As he left, I noticed there was something on the doorknob. I took it off and it was a political ad for a candidate that was running for office. It's possible that the poncho man was just campaigning for a candidate, but there's a lot of holes in that story. It was pouring out, so why would you go door to door, and why would you go that route in such a rural neighborhood? The houses are so far apart, you barely would make a dent on foot. The time doesn't make sense either. I and my mom were home, but it was about 4 in the afternoon. Most people would still be at work, so you'd probably get no response from knocking anyway. Eventually, the officer returned. He found the guy down the road and had questioned him. Poncho Man was able to ID himself and he claimed that he was a political campaigner and was just knocking on doors for that reason. When probed further, conveniently enough, Poncho Man couldn't provide any other door signs as the one that he had left on our house was the last one. That makes the campaign story even more absurd. Our house is in the middle of the street. It's not like we were the last by any means. So why wouldn't you bring enough for the whole street? Even the officer pointed this out to us and said that it was unusual behavior. Although the officer was suspicious of him, there wasn't anything he could do about it as there was no way to prove intent. He told us to be alert and not to hesitate if Poncho Man returns. Fast forward a few weeks and I start noticing that the police cars seem to be permanently stationed down the road from us, about a three minute drive. I got curious and asked my mom about it and she said that there were multiple break-ins into houses down the road and the police were doing some sort of sting operation. The Poncho Man encounter and the break-ins may be unrelated, but considering how Poncho Man acted, I have a sinking feeling that they are connected. Thankfully, for the past few months, we haven't heard or seen nothing of Poncho Man. We got a new doorbell system with a camera, and the police left the area where they're doing the sting. I hope the whole situation is over and done with, and I never want to meet Poncho Man. Security advice, please. The twins, 14 years old, and I went to bed a while ago. I'm still recovering from COVID, so I fell asleep very quickly and probably not entirely as quick thinking as usual. 
About a half hour ago, I was woken up because someone was knocking on the front door. I came down and, first mistake, opened the front door. A young man was there asking about someone called James. My youngest brother is called James, so this confused me at first, but James has never lived here. I tried to tell him that he had gotten the wrong address, but he carried on talking and it was clear that he wasn't talking about my brother. I told him again that he had the wrong address and he became quite aggressive. He said I was lying and asked me to let him in so he could charge his phone. Then I will show you I'm at the right house. I tried to close the door but he blocked it with his foot. After a brief struggle, I managed to get the door shut. When I closed the door, he carried on knocking for a while and yelled that he wasn't a scumbag and I was treating him like a scumbag. He wasn't going to hurt me, he just wanted to charge his phone. Eventually, he went away, but I am very shaken up and feeling very vulnerable. I am lucky because we have great neighbors and I know if they heard something, they would have come running, but they clearly didn't hear this. How can I feel secure when there's only me and my kids in the house? We were taking self-defense classes, but I am very aware that tonight could have ended very differently if he had gotten into my house. Update 24 hours after this post. My neighbors, both male, retired dad and his 19 year old construction worker son, both built like brick shit houses. They had just found two lads hiding in their garden. As soon as they were found, they ran for it. The son grabbed one of them and now they're waiting for the police. Their garden shares the fence with my garden. I didn't recognize the lad who they grabbed, but it's possible that his accomplice is the guy that tried to get into my house last night. Or it may be completely coincidental. My neighbor's son has a high-end motorbike that is very desirable and is parked in the back garden for that reason. Be vigilant, people. I have had some people suggest on this thread and will definitely be hiking up home security and I will never open the door again unless I know who it is because I opened the door tonight when I heard my neighbor say my name. So I'll begin this with a quick bit of background info. I work in lettings and real estate. And part of this, you have to go to houses and do a yearly inspection of properties that have tenants in them. Anyway, so I organize an inspection and it turns out the tenant won't be home. So he leaves the key out for us. He tells us that he's a spiritual person and keeps the bedroom for spiritual uses and would appreciate it if we didn't enter it as he doesn't even let his partner enter it. Said something about bad spirits resulting in sickness and possible death. So whatever, gotta respect some sort of boundaries as it is his home. So me and my colleague go to the property and do a quick visual inspection of the ground floor and garden. We note that in the shed there's a dog pen, but no sign of a dog. I notice that the mirror in the bathroom is covered with a blanket. Weird, but whatever. We go upstairs and see the bedroom with the closed door and a do not enter penciled on a piece of paper attached to it. We enter the master bedroom and see a fur rug on the floor. It's not sheepskin and appears homemade. I believe it's the poor dog. I notice there's no other mirror in the house. So the only mirror in the bathroom is covered. And this is a tradition in many cultures when holding awake so the spirits don't get trapped in the mirror. We felt very weird about this and got the hell out of the house. Might be more of a creepy unencounter to be honest, but I just wanted to see other people's thoughts. When I was about 11 years old, my family and I lived in a large one-story house in the Wisconsin countryside. We lived on the top of a small hill and the back of our house faced a large forested area. We only had one neighbor within a mile radius and it was an old woman who couldn't really get around by herself. On this particular night, my parents were going to have a date night and left me to watch my two siblings. I definitely still think I was too young for this. They had given me my first phone at 9 years old so that I could watch my siblings when they weren't home. I remember it was fall time because I had my bedroom windows open to keep the room cooler at night 
and I could constantly hear all the leaves brushing against each other outside. My parents had probably left around 8 p.m. and had already put my little brother, six years old, to bed. At this time, my brother had a huge fear of the dark and would refuse to leave his room after someone put him in bed and turned off the lights. He used to tell us that he thought someone would grab him from under the bed and try to pull him down if he tried to get up. My room was on the opposite side of the house as his. It shared a wall with the kitchen and mudroom. My sister had been sleeping in my room since we moved to this house and by the time this happened, she was already asleep next to me. I remember being scared to fall asleep for some reason. I think I was just nervous of not having my parents at home. But around about 9.30 p.m., I started hearing crunching leaves outside my window. At first, it was quite distant. It sounded like maybe animals in the woods. But then, it got closer to the house and my windows. Eventually, I could hear the distinct sound of someone's jeans rubbing together as they walked and footsteps in the dry leaves. My windows were about 5 feet above my floor, so I could never see out of them as a kid without standing on a stool. I heard the person slightly bumping into our trash cans, which were right outside the front door. Then, I heard the terrifying creak of the front door as it was pushed open slowly. Since we lived in the country, my parents never locked the doors. That's just how it was. I froze, petrified. I quickly looked at my sister, who was still sleeping peacefully, and gently nudged her to try to wake her up. She was a deep sleeper, and I didn't want to make too much noise, so instead I let her sleep. I knew it couldn't be my brother, so I texted my parents to see if they had gotten home early. I figured that maybe my dad came in first. That's why we only heard one person. At this point, I could hear one person shuffling things around in the mudroom and just walking around in there. I looked through my door and realized I hadn't locked it, as per usual, and considered trying to get up and sneak to lock it, but what I heard next made me freeze again. There was this vent connected to my room and the kitchen, and through it I heard a person step into the kitchen and give a small sigh. I heard them open a couple cupboards and open the fridge for a while. Finally, I got a text back from my dad. My stomach dropped when I read that they haven't even started heading back to the house yet and why I asked. My dad called me and, thank God, my ringer was off, but I decided to pick it up anyways out of fear. I had turned down my volume all the way and spoke as quietly as I could. I told him that I thought that someone was in our house and he freaked out and started asking questions, but I told him he had to be quiet because I was scared that the person might be able to hear me. My parents stayed on the phone while they got into their cars and started speeding back to the house. At this point, I asked them to mute themselves so that I could hear what was happening in the kitchen. That's when I realized things had gotten really quiet. I heard one of the cupboards start creaking shut, then light footsteps started making their way towards my room. My heart was pounding harder as I heard the person approach my door. I could see a slight shadow of their shoes underneath the door, but all they did was stand there. Scared that my parents would unmute themselves and I would be found, I hung up on them. It must have been a solid 30 seconds that the person stood there, not moving, not saying a word. Eventually, they just walked off. I heard them walk back through the kitchen, their jeans making some sounds as they rubbed together. While exiting the house, I heard the leaves crunch once again as they retreated back into the forest and that sound faded away. My parents got home probably 10 minutes later and stormed into the house, opening my door first and checking if I was safe. While I explained what happened, they doubted me and said I was probably just hearing noises. Needless to say, from that night on, I locked the door religiously. I was always unsure to where he might have come from or walked back to because even if he did walk through the forest, there weren't any more houses for nearly two miles. Though my siblings and I did find something in the woods when we explored it maybe a couple months later. There was a small shelter that someone had built made out of rusty corrugated metal and carpet squares. It had been flooded a little because of the marshy area in the woods it was in. There's a couple of empty alcohol bottles in it, but that was it. I'm glad I never came face to face with this person, but it still gives me the creeps to think that they might have heard me, but decided not to open my door anyway, and just left. Shadow, my 115 pound German Shepherd black lab mix, started to signal that she needed to use the restroom about 1 in the morning. Annoyed because I was almost asleep, I got up, put a hoodie on, and took her out with nothing but my phone for a flashlight. She started to do her usual sniff for 15 minutes just to go in her regular spot routine. 
I have my flashlight on because she is camouflaged by the night and I would like to know where she's at so she doesn't run off. Just as she starts using the bathroom, I turn away and notice someone. They're standing on the very edge of my yard. Looking back at my dog, I noticed she wasn't paying any attention to the person yet, so I called her to me and attached her leash. The person just stood there and watched me. I called out to them and said, You need to leave my yard. To which I got silence back. I cleared my throat and repeated myself, eventually attempting the third time just to change it to, Don't make me tell you again. You're going to leave my yard. Just as my partner was coming outside to see what the commotion was, they took a few steps forward, clearly intending to continue towards me. They caught a glimpse of my partner, backpedaled, turned around and left. As confused as he was, I was in complete shock. We've had to run this one person off the property because they would bring the dog over to use the bathroom in our yard. I've seen their face, but it wasn't them. They haven't been back, but right before that, we did find footprints near our shed and windows of our home. Generally unnerved. Contacted the police, and they didn't do anything other than take a statement. Been told it will go nowhere until physical harm or a break-in happens. When I was around 10 years old, I had been invited to a sleepover for the first time at my friend's house. This friend, who I'll call Abby, lives pretty far away from me, so us hanging out always felt like a special occasion. I just started becoming brave enough to sleep away from my parents, and because she was one of my oldest friends, Abby's house was going to be one of these trial runs for sleepovers. A little bit about Abby's family. She's the youngest of four kids. Her older brother is about 10 years older than us, has pretty severe autism, and continues to live full-time with Abby's parents. He's always been a bit of a wild card, and I, as a 10-year-old girl, always felt a little anxious around him. Anyway, there are three of us girls at the slumber party. We decided to sleep on the main floor of her house so that we could stay up late and watch movies that would eventually lull us to sleep. I had chosen the couch which was perpendicular to the wall of the window looking onto Abby's deck and backyard. The other girls had set up on the floor on a mattress together. They were cousins. We throw in a DVD and we fall asleep quick. Sleeping away from home has never been easy for me. I wake up frequently and sometimes can't fall asleep at all to begin with. This night was one of those times where, after clocking a solid two hours, something stirred me back into consciousness. Coming to, I noticed the bright light of the TV glowing first before my eyes adjusted and noticed something outside that wasn't there before. It was a person. A man, actually. He was sitting on the deck chairs and he positioned it to face directly towards where the three of us were sleeping. He hadn't noticed that I was awake, but seeing him made my heart race. I stayed totally still, watching him. It was dark, so his features were a bit ambiguous, but I could tell that he was studying us and smirking. Terrified, I watched him for a few minutes before turning myself into the couch cushion and closing my eyes. Some time passed, maybe a few minutes, maybe a half an hour. Finally, I mustered up enough courage to look again. He was gone. To this day, I have no idea who it was that got into Abby's backyard and sat on her deck watching us in the middle of the night, but the image of him sitting there, grinning, still haunts me. For a while, I thought maybe it was her brother, but the guy had dark hair and dark eyes. Her brother was blonde. Anyway, thought I'd share this. Luckily, we all made it to the next morning unharmed, but that was the last time I ever spent the night at Abby's house. I'm a 27 year old male. In my childhood home, there was an island in the kitchen with bar stools. If you sat in the furthest bar stool to the right, you would be able to see through the door that opened up to the garage. One night, when I was about 6 or 7, everyone else in the family was either in the bedrooms or in the living room watching TV. My dad worked nights, so he wasn't home. I was sitting on the bar stool furthest to the right, having a nighttime snack when I look over and I see an eerie white hand wave at me. All I could see was the hand. I was petrified. I didn't know what to do or say. The hand waved again and pointed down at the doorknob as if to suggest I unlock it and open it. After that, I ran into the living room and yelled to my mother. She called her neighbor over to investigate. 
We lived in rural western Kentucky, so it took a few minutes for him to get there. When a neighbor finally arrived, he looked around and he couldn't find anybody. It had been raining all night, but we couldn't see any evidence of tracks into the garage or in the driveway. The same thing happened to my sister not long after. She was only a year younger than me. She told me she walked up to the door after the hand gesture and almost unlocked it, but screamed and ran to my mother. To this day, I hate to think about what would have happened if either of us would have opened that door. And I hate to think about who was watching to see that two of the younger kids were alone in the kitchen or how long they had been watching. My childhood home was a small 800 square foot two bedroom with a dormer upstairs room. My bedroom was along the side of the home at the back and because my brother and I shared it, my bed was literally along the front of the window. This was in the 1970s. I recall several times being woken up to tapping on my window, seeing a man sized dark shadow looking at me and completely being frozen. My heart racing as he ran his nails on the metal screening. Usually there was no light except for the street light three houses away that was blocked from the rear of our house. My eyes clenched and I would hold my breath and try not to move. Eventually he'd leave. One summer night he brought a flashlight and was shining it up and down my bed and all around my room onto my younger brother but mostly on me. My parents didn't believe me in the morning, but I convinced them to allow us to move our bed upstairs. No more window on the ground floor after that night. Edit. I never put the two together until I had my own kids. I was constantly pulling the blinds and curtains closed and did a whole check multiple times before bed and even shot up after everyone was asleep to check before I slept and whenever I would wake up. I'd always look outside the windows too and my wife always asked me what I was looking for. I guess these childhood events actually still haunt me. By the way, ultimately, I think it was the lady who lived next door, son, who came to drink and visit her. He was about 10 years older than me and was always kind of creepy. An alcoholic, never married and moved from state to state. I'm guessing he was the peeper. Most of my money comes from babysitting. There's a pair of loving parents who's one years old I watch every week. One day, there was a knock at the door. The mom had let me know that a lady was coming to pick something up, so I assumed it was her. I opened the door to a raggedy man in a stained white tank top. The moment I saw him, I froze. With just the door open and a crack, he asked if the dad of the kid I was babysitting was home. It was clear that he was up to no good, so I lied and said that it was only me and my older brother. The guy then stepped uncomfortably close to the door and asked if he could come in to check. I was alone with a one-year-old. I said that it wasn't my house and I couldn't let him in, but that I could take a message for the parents. He told me to tell them that guilty wanted them. I uncomfortably smiled and shut the door. I immediately called the kid's parents as I ran around the house, locking the doors and windows. I watched the guy take a picture of the house and leave. My uncle, whom I trust, showed up in two minutes with a weapon to protect me and the baby after hearing what happened. Police were called to patrol the area. When the parents got home, they told me that the guy had some issues with them and came looking to fight the dad. The scariest job I've ever had. This happened back in 2016 and I'm still getting over the grief. I haven't really shared this story with anyone yet, but I finally decided to share it. I'm not going to say where this happened, for privacy reasons. Even though I have since moved, I'm afraid that people related to those responsible might come after me. Anyway, at the time this happened, it was August and it was in the evening. My brother and I lived in a small two-bedroom, one-bath home that sat on 10 acres of land. It was what I once considered my dream home paradise. We had everything I could have wanted. A good amount of land, two-car garage, a pole barn, and a very nice view from our back deck. Now here comes some important details to note. The house itself was a basic square with a back deck on the southwest corner of the house. 
It was notched in the corner of the house with two walls on either side forming the corner of the house. You couldn't see around the house unless you bent over the railing and you could only see the west and southwest away from the house. The garage was on the south side of the deck. Only a few feet away from the deck was a driveway leading to the garage so you couldn't see anyone coming up the driveway from the back of the house. Anyway, it was evening and I was sitting on the back deck smoking a joint and my brother was in his bedroom. I was just outside enjoying the weather and the peace and tranquility of the area. Suddenly that all shattered when I heard my brother shouting, followed by four loud gunshots. I immediately jumped and looked around the wall of the house towards the window of my brother's room, which faces our backyard, just in time to see three masked men hopping out the window. They were in black and in their late thirties, but they were wearing masks so I couldn't really see their faces. One of them looked at me and froze, almost like he was expecting me not to be there. The three then turn and run around the north wall of the house, towards the front yard. I threw my joint out and ran inside the house, through the kitchen, and down the hall to my brother's room. The door was opened and I went inside. When I did, I stopped dead in my tracks. My heart froze and my blood went to ice. There on the bed was my brother, laying there facing up motionless, with his eyes wide open, bleeding to death. Now what I did next probably wasn't very smart, but I ran to the living room, grabbed my M1 off the living room wall, and threw open the front door just in time to see a blue Chevy Caprice peeling out of the driveway. I fired three shots at them, one missing, one hitting the car's tire, and one hitting the back window. I must have hit one of the guys inside because I heard someone scream. Looking back, this probably wasn't a good thing to do since there's a house across the street and I could have accidentally shot the neighbor's house. I wasn't really thinking at that time. Anyway, the car sped off and I ran back inside and grabbed some towels to try and cover the wounds on my brother's chest while also calling 911. While trying to cover up the wound, I was telling the dispatcher what happened and I knew my brother was already gone. He had no pulse when I checked and three bullet holes in his chest, but I think I was in disbelief at the time. Anyway, since this area has an almost non-existent crime rate, you can bet your butt every sheriff and ambulance in the county was there in 15 minutes. I had to explain to the detective that was there what happened while trying not to break down crying. The sheriff and detective were both in disbelief since nothing like this has happened in this area in over 37 years. I'll spare you all the little details, but over the next three months the investigation wrapped up, and here's what I learned. After the police had gone through my brother's phone, they found that he had apparently been getting death threats. Apparently, he had been hitting on a girl that was a gang member's girlfriend. The guy warned my brother to stay away from her, and even after he did that, he decided to get rid of my brother for good. Apparently, one night before he was killed, he received a message from an unknown person saying, I'm coming for you. Somehow, the guy found out where he lived and brought two guys with him to do the job. The strangest thing is we lived over 40 minutes from where the gang's territory was in the city. The guy was so aggravated at my brother, he drove himself and two other guys 40 minutes out into the countryside just to kill him. It really amazes me how far this guy was willing to go to make sure no one went near his girlfriend. So now let me say what happened to those three guys. One of them was the one I had shot as the car pulled out of my driveway and he apparently died while in the car. The other guy, who was along for the job, was caught during a traffic stop. He was dumb enough to take the same car out the next day, and there was an alert out for it. Since there aren't many sky blue Chevy Capris, they left it easy to find. He was arrested and charged with murder, and since the prosecutor where the murder happened are way more strict, he was sentenced to death. The guy who orchestrated the whole thing was actually killed in another shooting back in the city the following week. They all got what they deserved in the end, in my opinion. I did have to go to court for the guy that I shot, but because he has no family that they could find and some other circumstances, I didn't have to go to jail. I did have a hefty fine though for dangerous use of a firearm due to the fact that I could have accidentally shot my neighbor's house and had to take gun training classes, but I didn't care about that. For almost a year, I didn't do anything except for mope around my house and barely even left my house. I never even went to my brother's room after that, 
I just left the door to it closed so I wouldn't be tempted to look in it. I was so devastated by what happened. I nearly lost interest in everything. I ended up packing up my stuff and just abandoning the house. I even left my brother's truck behind sitting in the garage. I couldn't stand being there anymore nor did I feel safe there anymore after what happened to my brother. My brother and I were really close and to lose a loved one so tragically and suddenly in your own home is devastating. It was sad because I really loved the house and my brother and I honestly thought it would be my forever home. I just couldn't stand being there anymore. I moved 8 hours away and haven't been back to the house and I honestly don't think I ever will. Even though I moved I still won't ever forget what happened that evening. I'm doing a little better now and I have someone else living with me, but I definitely will be scarred for life from that event. I'm a 26 year old female. I recently moved into a duplex by myself away from the messy house situation with my four male housemates. It was an oasis of rugs, plants, and acceptable level of tidiness. One night, around 9 to 10 p.m., I was watching TV and probably smoking weed because I was bad for it then. When I heard a knock at the front door, I opened it. I know. And there was a really scruffy looking guy, maybe early 30s, standing on my porch. He seemed drunk or high and mumbled something at me about coming inside. Unprepared for this kind of interaction, I dumbly said the words to the effect of, You're not coming in. I don't know you. Though he didn't seem to understand. He gave really off vibes. He then mumbled something about meeting someone at a bar and having drinks with her. And I thought maybe he meant to knock on my neighbor's door. A maybe 40 year old sweet but pretty rough lady I'd met a few times. I pointed at her door and to my relief was right and he left. I locked and chained my door and pulled my blinds right down as my living room was fully visible from my porch. It should have been the end of it but I had a really uneasy feeling from then on like I was a sitting duck. I will mention I was a people pleaser and was too busy worrying about hurting his feelings to immediately slam the door on his face like I should and these days I would have. Fast forward six hours in the dead of night. I still had my living room light on which would have been partly visible from the edges of my blinds. I was still up because stoner and I think I just walked into my bedroom when I heard it. The softest, quietest, don't wake the neighbors knocking on my door. My gut fell out of my butt and I was rooted in one spot, looking unbelievably at my door as he gently knocked 30, maybe 40 times continuously. It was ages before I was able to move, to think, or do anything. I called my boyfriend and told him in frantic whispers what was happening and I think he told me that I should call the cops. I did so in a pathetic shaking voice and heard silence. Too scared to move closer, I stood frozen half in my bedroom and half in my living room for an eternity until I believed that he was gone. The next morning my boyfriend visited and dragged me over to my neighbor. She told us he was a really weird guy she invited over and then regretted, later kicking him out. She didn't go into details but she was very concerned about him coming back to my door. My boyfriend made her text him and shared all the awful things that would happen to him if he ever knocked on my door again which thankfully he never did. I'm a 24 year old female. I've been reading through these types of stories for a few years now and I'd like to hear your thoughts on something that happened to me. This is not the most exciting story you're going to hear and I can't explain why it happened the way it did. I am also really stupid and lack common sense in this story. I'm sorry. I used to live in an old Victorian house in Maryland and at the time of the story I was 10 years old. This house had been turned into a duplex that split the two floors and basically just rented them as apartments. I lived in the upstairs. There's a university nearby so we had a lot of college students and we also had a lot of drug issues in the area. People were always getting their houses searched or getting into fights over it. The owner of the house had told my family that the people who rented the upstairs previously had given him a lot of trouble and he had kicked them out. My family had just moved there for my dad's new job and didn't have a place to live yet so we were thankful that their contract ended so early so that we could take their place. If there's anything else the owner told my parents it was not shared with me. I was homeschooled online as a child 
so my parents would leave for the day to go to work while I stayed in the apartment and did my schoolwork alone. Maybe about a week after we had moved in, there was a slab banging on the door. I ran down the side stairs to open it and there was this tall, thick man dressed in black with a black mask over his whole face. The mask had holes for his eyes and mouth. As immensely stupid as this sounds, no alarm bells went off to me. This place was cold year round and I stupidly just assumed his gear happened to be black. Behind him I remember seeing a car parked next to the building that was still running. He just stood there silently for a couple seconds and I felt awkward so I said, Hi, can I help you with something? He continued just to stand there for what felt like forever before saying something like, I'm here for the mail. I'm smiling and saying something like, Oh sure, you must have just moved out. My dad already brought all the mail this morning. Let me go see if there's anything. So I turn around, left the door wide open, and ran inside to find the mail pile. I looked through it, but I didn't see anything that didn't have my family's name on it. When I went back to tell him the bad news, he was gone, and so was the car. When my parents came home that evening, I told them that the previous runner had stopped by and asked for their mail. My dad had a fit and said that I shouldn't open the door while I was home alone and apparently our mail comes from the owner since he separates it before bringing it up to each of the renter's box since we have the same address so we wouldn't have gotten any of the mail that doesn't belong to us anyways and the previous renter would already know that. He was furious with me for being a moron and that was before he thought to ask what they look like. I described the black suit and mask. I know enough now that I handled the situation entirely wrong and am beyond stupid. I'm not looking to get berated for it. I would actually like to hear what you think. If this suspicious guy had malicious intentions, why didn't he do anything? I was home alone. It was morning, so my parents wouldn't have come back until that evening anyway. I don't even think the other renter was home. I clearly didn't suspect anything from him and left the door wide open while I turned my back to him and ran inside the house. I am immensely thankful that nothing happened to me. I don't ever want to appear as ungrateful that this didn't take an awful turn. I just don't understand what protected me if that was actually the case. It was the first weekend in May 1997 when this happened. At the time, I was a sophomore at a local private two-year college. Instead of living in the dorms, I lived at home as our house was right next to campus to the point that I was closer to a couple of my classes than students that lived in the dorms. Just to the south of our place was an overflow parking lot which served both the church and the school. The school was about to embark on a remodeling project where it had enough construction to warrant parking a tractor trailer in the overflow parking lot basically perpendicular to my house. Two of my best friends were heading home the next morning, one for Iowa and the other for Virginia. So we decided to spend the evening as best as we could by watching movies. This was before streaming services were even a thing. The college was a hotbed of activity as people were packing up to head home with graduating sophomores getting ready for the ceremony in two days. As we were lounging in my living room, a couple girls we knew, one of which I was interested in, Suddenly rang the doorbell, asking to come in to wash their hands as they had been on a walk. Their hands smelled funny. The girl I was digging, named KT, stuck her hands in my face to which I recognized the distinct smell of shaving cream, so I knew something nefarious was afoot. We watched them leave via the dining room windows before I told the boys that they were up to something. So we left from the back door. These two girls had tried to trash my friend's room with shaving cream and toothpaste. Oh, it was game on. We ran into one of the boys' mod maids, an obnoxious guy who had no concept of boundaries. I made the point of never letting the guy, let's call him JB, know where I lived as he was the type to just show up unannounced and not pick up on social cues when it was time to leave. The girls were hiding from a retribution and even JB pledged his loyalty to help us. I told him to keep an eye out, we would be back so we left him hanging in the common area under the girls' dorms. We slid back to my house, to which I told the boys to just be patient. The girls would be back. We set up watching to the south from the darkened dining room, soon rewarded by seeing KT sneaking back towards the house. I told the boys the plan was to ambush her, so we crept out the back door. KT had disappeared behind the tractor trailer as she was obscured from my view. 
But to our dismay, there was a black clad figure laying on the ground just around the corner from the trailer where Katie was hiding. My boys were next to me as I was cussing in whispers because I was 30 yards away from whom I thought was JB. He was laying with his head away from us so he couldn't see us without turning his body as he stayed perfectly still. He might have been 10 feet from the corner of the trailer where KT was. After a brief discussion, I said it couldn't be helped so we continued on with our plan to ambush and scare KT. The three of us quietly padded around the backside of the trailer to find KT on her stomach intently watching our house, trying to see movements. She was actually way closer to where JB was lying, completely oblivious to the fact that he was actually within 5 feet of her. She never heard me as I crept up behind her, curled my hands into a claw before grabbing her as I snarled. Fetal position instantly from her, which prompted howling and laughter from my two friends and myself. She was petrified. I caught my breath long enough to wonder where JB was as I thought he would have joined us by now. Looking around the corner, there was no one on the ground, but you could tell someone had been laying there, even in the darkness. One of the boys, TC, said that the black clad figure jumped up and ran to the west. Odd, I thought, but JB was also a strange cat. After KT apologized for her early hijinks and I had detailed what happened, our merry band made it back to the campus to keep our eyes on her. We ran into JB to which I said, Dude, why did you have to run off? You could have stayed. JB replied, Uh, I don't even know where you live. The realization hit us like a ton of bricks. It wasn't JB laying on the ground mere feet from KT. KT went white as a sheet and all of us were suddenly creeped out by this random guy laying on the ground. It turns out during the summer, all around college, there were cases of houses being walked through with very little being taken, as if someone was casing houses, but no one was ever caught. I was in my room chilling at 3am when suddenly I heard someone call my name from outside my window. Knowing no one would look for me at this hour, I naturally felt weird about it. So when I looked out the window and no one was to be seen against my better judgment, I decided to go down to smoke to see who it was. When I got down, I heard the same voice offering me a light and asking for a cigarette. I looked to where the voice was coming from. Standing there was a man who looked to be in his 50s. Weirded out, I asked, who are you? He didn't answer and just said that he hadn't seen me in a while and then asked when I was going to go back to base. I didn't answer and asked again who he was. He just stared blankly at me. I asked again and he tried to grab my arm while telling me to say happy birthday to my brother. After that he just started walking away while saying I needed to clean my room since I leave in a few days. Mind you I never told him when I leave and my apartment was on the 10th floor and the window is almost never opened. Just a weird encounter. This happened a few weeks ago, however it scared the crap out of me and I learned something new about my home. I was off work and inside for the day. There were several knocks and the person kept ringing the doorbell so I eventually answered though I wasn't expecting anyone. I also live in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky, with only one neighbor nearby. A mid-30s man, seemingly having Down syndrome, parked at the very edge of my driveway, on the road, which alarmed me. He asked me questions about knowing anyone who used to live here. He asked if I was in high school and how old I was and if I was home alone. My fiance has two cars so thankfully it looked like I was not alone and I told him no and no. He seemed scared off and ran to his car and sped off. Afterwards I went to my neighbors and inquired about the previous owners and the man. They told me that there was an elderly couple with a son with a disability and the couple had hung themselves in the house. So double mind blown at this point, and I'm scared to even answer my front door again. I received a knock on my back door around 1am. They tried about three times before giving up. Someone coming to my back door is quite rare and would only happen if it was the landlord or my brother. My girlfriend has a key and wouldn't need to knock. None of the former would knock at my door at that hour. I didn't answer, mostly out of general annoyance. Flash forward to today, 
Two days later, my girlfriend had just parked in the lot and I opened my back door for the first time since hearing the knocks. I saw some purple flowers in plastic wrapping that had been wilted due to the heavy rain and snow over the past couple days. It was unmarked and has no note attached to it. I immediately assumed the visitor was someone who had delivered flowers from my girlfriend. I had flowers delivered to her just a week ago, so I assumed she did it too. I had felt bad that I had let them wilt in the rain and profusely apologized to her when she came through the door. The flowers were not from her and the 1am visitor remains unexplained. If a family member sent them, they would have called to ask if I got it and I doubt anyone is stalking me, a guy in his mid-30s. Any ideas what this could be? I just found it unsettling. I'm a 16 year old female, so about two years ago I was home with my mom. It was just the two of us. Now my mom at the time was addicted to drugs and alcohol and was basically in a drug induced coma. Nothing could wake her up. I had decided to take a bath while she slept. My bathroom door was locked as was my mother's bedroom door as she seemed to think we didn't know about her addictions and kept it locked so we didn't find out. The house was silent. I had only been in the bath for a half an hour before I heard the front door open. I assumed it was my elder sister coming back from work as no one else would have just walked in. But I wanted to be sure so I texted her. I immediately got a worried text back saying, No, I'm not home. Why? Was someone there? I froze. I could hear the footsteps. Now our house was small, one story and from the front door to the bathroom door was only a small living room. I heard a weird scraping noise coming from the hallway to the bathroom. I heard the scraping sound stop outside the bathroom door and then someone grabbed the doorknob. They turned it very slowly from side to side for about a minute. The entire time I was silent, still frozen and shaking like a leaf. I wanted to call my mom but I didn't want whoever it was to hear the sound and get to my mom. After a while, I didn't hear anything. I stayed in the bath for what I think was an hour, till I heard the front door open and then click shut softly. I stayed in the bath long after the water had gone cold until I heard my sister come in. She yelled if I was there and if I was okay and why the door was unlocked. I got out of the bath and heard her gasp before I had come out, but when I did, I swear my blood went cold. There's a line spanning the wall of the hallway. The paint had been cut out like someone had trailed something sharp along the wall. Currently, the theory of the scraping noise I heard was someone trailing a knife on the wall. This was a few years ago in my old house around Halloween. I'm a 43 year old male. One day, I was home alone in my house. I have a wife three kids, and a dog. I'm in the basement cutting wood and working when all of a sudden I hear a thump on the ceiling above me, which is the first level floor. It's rhythmic and almost perfect in beat. I'm a handyman and do a lot of my own fixing and know the unusual sound houses make. This was not usual. I started following the thumping around the first floor. It's as if someone, something, is walking around I call out my wife's name, no answer, my kids, no answer, just soft moaning and thumps that are both getting louder. My dog is in the basement with me and following the sound with me with its tail straight up, completely silent. This is weird because I have a loud, jumpy dog. I then slowly follow the thumping to the steps. I hear a weak old woman's voice calling for Jimmy and she's calling it over and over again. Ignoring my hellos, she keeps walking around the first floor, calling out, moaning, and thumping. I grab my dog by the collar and leave out the basement door and walk around the outside of my house. I go up the street and there's this younger couple calling out for someone. Let's say Nancy for the sake of this. I go up to them and say, Are you Jimmy? The young guy looks at me in relief and confusion crossed on his face. He tells me that that's his dad's name, but he passed away years ago. 
Turns out Nancy was his mom with some kind of mental issue. She had snuck out of the house up the road. Her family lived in my house before we did. Did not know that. And she was having some kind of episode where she went looking for her husband in her home. She also had a wooden leg. Don't know the story, but that was a thumping. We got her home safely, and now I double-checked my locks from that point on. This happened pretty much an hour ago. I was pulling up to my house with my mom when she says, Who is at her house? Me, being confused, looked at her yard. Then I see someone walking up towards us. My mom says he was trying to open the door to get in. The encounter went like this. Hey, I just lost my job and was looking for some work. Could you help? My mom replied with something that I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure she said no because of what he's about to ask. Could you spare a few dollars? Wanting to get rid of him, my mom said, Sure, if you can come to this side, I can give you a couple bucks. Thank you. My mom gives him some money. They start to talk about how he should take it as a blessing and pass it on to someone else. He says my mom is an angel. Then they start to talk about other things I can't remember right now. Then the man just appears. My mom starts to drive around to find the man to make sure he left as she understandably didn't feel safe getting out. We start to drive around. She calls her boyfriend and my dad. Then there's a cop on the side of the road. Hey, there's a middle-aged man on my doorstep with the screen door open. Then he walked up to my car and asked for work at this time of night, which I found suspicious. He asked me for money and I gave him some money. Where do you live? My mom tells the cop and he says, Okay, I'll follow you there. We drive back home. He inspects the front door and backyard, but there's no one. We decide it's safe to go back in. My mom's boyfriend is currently at our house right now, and I'm shaking. Edit, I just talked to my mom. She said he could have been drunk and at the wrong house as it was St. Patrick's Day, and people do like to get drunk on that day, even when they aren't Irish. But I highly doubt that, as I find it weird that as soon as he saw us pulling up, he came over to our car with a sob story. Take this information as you will, though. I have been seeing this young man who appears to be homeless in the park across the street from my house for the past few days. He must be new to this area because I had never seen him before and I frequent this park with my dog at least three to five times a day. He has some odd tendencies like sleeping in random and odd areas of the park such as next to a busy sidewalk and in landscaping. Tonight while walking to my car I see that he has entered our small 20 apartment gated complex and is hanging out at the bottom of my stairs that is leading to my parking spot. No idea how he got in there other than he followed someone in as a pedestrian through the lock gates that you have to enter a code for. I get in my car as fast as possible. I grab some dinner and about 20 minutes later I come home and don't see him around anymore. I quickly walk up my step and glance around while getting my key in the lock to see that he had followed me up the stairs and was watching me from about 3-4 to four feet back. I was visibly startled when seeing him and said hello or something while turning my key and going inside, locking the door as fast as I could. This happened about 30 minutes ago, still shaking from the creepiness. This took place a couple years ago in Hollywood, Florida. I was in middle school at the time. My sister, mom, and I were at our front porch unlocking the door after coming home from school. We noticed something was off right away because our alarm didn't go off. My mom has always made it a point to set the alarm before she would leave the house. Although that was weird, we just commented about it. It was very possible that she had just forgot to set it. Because of that possibility, we just ignored it and moved on. As we entered the house, we began to set our backpacks and other stuff down. I heard the drawer close in my bedroom. I thought I was hearing things, so I looked at my mom and was about to ask her if she heard something. My mom looked at me at the same time and her look of horror was enough for me to realize that she had heard the same thing. My sister didn't notice because she had her earphones in. 
That sound and the fact that the alarm was off was enough for my mom to decide to get us out of there. She loudly said, I want to show you something in the backyard. But she didn't want anyone in the house to know that we were onto them and that's why we were leaving the house. My sister looked confused, but I knew exactly why my mom said this. As we entered the backyard and shut the door behind us, we sped walked towards the alley behind our house. The only thing that separated us from it was a wooden fence. Once we reached the fence, we opened the gate and began to exit into the alley. I was the last one through the gate, and before I shut it, I looked at the house for the last time. To my horror, I saw someone looking at me through our curtains. We called the police and they found no one, and nothing was stolen. I never told anyone about what I saw. I was about 12 or 13. It was a Friday or Saturday night, and my dad worked nights. My parents were separated, so I was at my dad's place. I had done homework, and once it got really late, I got into my pajamas. I checked my doors and on my younger sister. She was asleep and I stayed up watching TV. I heard a knock at the front door. I had a dog. He begins to bark and runs to the back. It's just a little past midnight at this point. No one should be there. I decided to stay quiet. There were two windows I could look out of but I decided not to. This was probably a good thing because there were knocks on that window too. Once that happened, I called my dad. Honestly, I should have called the police, but I was scared. I was near one of them, and I could hear footsteps and voices. I didn't hear a word they said because I was freaking out, and I moved away. I went to the back door to make sure it was locked, and it was. Once I turned away, however, there were knocks. My dog stands by it and barks more. My dad tells me to check on my sister, and she's still sleeping. I finally decided to peek outside and see a truck, and it's just sitting there. My dad told me I'll be okay, and soon after, he sent my grandfather over. He sat me for a while before going home. Now, in the morning, my sister told me she didn't hear anything. To be fair, I did close her bedroom door. I'm also glad the entire house was locked up. I wouldn't find out until a couple weeks later that the house next door was broken into. We literally had the police come over to our house and ask if we heard anything. We hadn't. My dad later moved into a bigger house, and that was that. This only happened a few hours ago, so I'm shaken, but it's too early in the morning to phone and wake up my friends. I need to talk to someone and get this out. I'm so creeped out and concerned, so I thought about coming here. Brief setting and context, I'm a woman in my 30s caring for my elderly parents, so I'm staying in my downstairs room in my childhood home at the moment. The window faces the main street, which is an average residential street in a fairly quiet area. The bed faces the window. I often have that window open at night since I need to be cool to sleep and haven't worried about it since there's a cabinet and aquarium in front of the window area. Not blocking the window from view and I could reach to open and close it, but it would make it difficult for someone to climb in. My dog, Sable, also sleeps in the room with me. While she's a sweet-natured, medium-sized dog who doesn't look the least bit threatening, she's a fantastic guard dog in that she's always alert to any noises and will stand her ground and bark and growl if she senses a threat. So I've never really worried about the open window. After tonight, I won't be able to leave it open again. It started at maybe 3.30 to 4 a.m. sometime. I was awake. Since I care for my parents, I often have disrupted sleep patterns, and I'm awake at odd hours. I was reading a book when I heard Sable growl, low and deep. Then she jumped off the bed and began to pace a bit, looking up at the window before jumping out the cabinet by the window, barking. I shouted, hey, we're calling the police. Dog will bite. Just in case there is someone out there. I went to look at the curtains to the side. I didn't see anything. I pulled the curtains closed again and made sure to pull the right curtain over, then drew the left curtain, the one that covers the open part of the window, all the way over, covering the right curtain too, tucking it so the one wouldn't be able to move it. I really wasn't alarmed then. 
It was a fairly quiet residential street, but there are foxes around that we sometimes hear, and occasionally someone passing by our neighbor's gate next to the door will make Sable growl or bark, but she doesn't usually react the way she did this time. She usually growl, but stay in bed, and her reaction was much stronger than normal. I thought that if it was someone scoping out our window to potentially burgle, they would have now seen the room was occupied by a person and a dog and would find an easier target, but I mainly guessed it was just some random noise she heard outside. I was wrong. A good half hour later, after I relaxed and thought I might doze off soon, I heard a growl again, a really serious, deep, and low growl, and I listened, again thinking it might be foxes or something but I heard what sounded like deep, hard movie breathing sounds. Like the heavy breathing sounds a pervert makes on the phone to his stalking victim in a film. I sat up, looked out the window, and my heart stopped. The curtain had been pulled back, lifted from the bottom like someone was peeking underneath it, and I could still hear the heavy breathing. I shouted, hey, and moved from the bed to the side of the window so I could see past the curtain. I saw a figure of a man moving away from the window to the right towards the front door and exit the front garden. Too dark to make out any features or clothing. It was just a dark male figure. Shakenly, I immediately thought that since I knew he moved away and it wasn't at or under our window, I reached and pulled it shut, grabbed my phone and called the emergency services. One thing that creeped me out in hindsight is that it would have taken me a few seconds to move from my bed to the side of the window. And that was after I shouted and he knew that he had been seen. But he must have stayed there even knowing that I had seen him. Until I pulled the curtain and could see out. Then he moved away. The heavy breathing was so deliberate. It was so loud. Like someone was trying to frighten me. While on the phone with the police, I went around the ground floor of the house, turning the lights on, making sure the rest of the house was secure. And it was. I'm very careful to lock all the doors and windows at night. And everything looked undisturbed. Two patrol officers came shortly before 5 a.m. and took their report. They suggested asking the neighbor if they had camera footage and to let them know that there's a prowler in the area. The cops went to drive around the area, saying that they'd be wanting to know what someone was doing wandering around at 5 a.m. Anyway, since the dark meant I only saw the shape of the person, I had no real description. I doubt they could do much. I couldn't even be 100% certain it was a man. But the breathing in the figure I saw instantly made me think male, and the outline of his head looked smooth. So either he was bald or wearing a tight cap, then the height would have been average, 5'8 to 5'10. I was still shaken, but feeling angry and violated, and wishing we had a camera system now. We'll be looking into that. I never thought anything like this would happen. Don't have any enemies, no recent exes, no one I know of harboring any grudges, since I'm caring for my folks full time now, I'm not out socializing or making any enemies, nor are my elderly or disabled parents. I'm at the wrong side of 35 and living in jeans, joggers, and t-shirts. No makeup or fussing with my hair most of the time. So not a likely target for a peeping Tom. If it wasn't for the fact that it was my dog who alerted me to something both times, I'd wonder whether I was half asleep and trapped it. I have had hallucinations once as a result to a bad reaction to antidepressants. That was more than a decade ago. Hasn't happened before or since. And I learned how to test my reality in times. I was worried about whether something was really happening or not. I have to think it was someone who was looking to burgle our house. But for the fact that they came back so much later, maybe someone was on drugs or having a mental health episode. Or, and this one bothers me most, Someone who wanted to scare me. But why? Who? They know where I live. Are they going to come back? New fears keep popping into my mind. Like most nights, I'm up at some point late at night or very early in the morning and will let the dog outside into the back garden for a quick pee and I'm suddenly aware of how easy it would be to be attacked and the person gaining entry then. There's a passage around the side of the house that goes from the front to the back garden with only a very small side gate, meant to keep the dog confined, not designed to keep others out. It would be easy for someone to access, then hide against the back of the house, completely hidden from view. 
They were bold enough to come back a second time, even knowing a person and a dog were in the room, perhaps hoping I would have fallen asleep again. They seemed to be trying to deliberately scare me when they returned the second time, doing the deep breathing noise, and stayed by the window even after I shouted. In those few seconds it would have taken me from the shout out until I reached the window and could move the curtains out of the way. They could have moved and been long out of sight, but they stayed there until there was a chance I could see them, only then moving away. The breathing noises and then the coldness ran through me when I actually saw the man moving away from the window will always haunt me, along with the questions of their motives. Were they trying to scare me? Why? What's to stop them from coming back? Back when I was in 6th grade, I had a close-knit group of friends. There were four of us, and we were all girls, and we hung out all the time. Sleepovers were the norm for us, and we usually rotated houses, seeing that all our parents knew each other, and we all lived relatively close to each other, the furthest being about 10 minutes away. One particular sleepover, we were at my friend Caitlin's house, and two of her cousins just happened to also be sleeping over. Caitlin had two sisters and an older brother that were really nice and friendly. During our sleepovers, they usually just stayed in their rooms and would only come out for food, so we never really felt like we were imposing on them. Her brother would sometimes let us play with his PS2, and his sisters would talk to us about boys and high school gossip, which at the time we thought was really cool. Overall, Caitlin had a really great relationship with her siblings. I couldn't say the same for her cousins though. One of her cousins was in 8th grade and she was closer in age to one of Caitlin's older sisters who was a freshman in high school so she was staying in her room. The other cousin was a boy who was a junior in high school and naturally he stayed in Caitlin's brother's room. The girl was nice but seemed a bit shy. The guy however just gave me the creeps. He was definitely more outgoing but something about his mannerisms was strange and when he smiled it looked like he was smiling about something he thought in his head and not necessarily at you. He had shoulder length, stringy and greasy hair that was dirty blonde and was pretty scrawny for a guy's age. He looked like he could be a freshman in high school. Caitlin really seemed uncomfortable around him. Later on, we were in Caitlin's room. She told us that she just recently met her cousins because their mom and her mom had a falling out years before and weren't talking to each other. They recently reconnected so they thought it would be a good idea for Caitlin's aunt and her children to come visit for a weekend. Caitlin said that her female cousin was really nice, but that she thought the guy was weird. Ever since he got to the house, he's been trying to hang out with her instead of her brother. He would go into her room and go through her toys and books, trying to make conversation with her. He was also kind of touchy. He would pet her cheeks and her hair. When she would flinch or move away from him, he would get this really cold look in his eyes and he would stare at her for a few seconds before smiling, that creepy smile he does. We all agreed that it was really weird but eventually moved on to other things and talked about the usual stuff 6th graders talk about. We ended up watching a movie before bed and took our turns going to the bathroom in the hallway that Caitlin shared with one of her sisters to brush her teeth. The oldest sister had her own bathroom in her room. Everyone called dibs on their turn, and since I didn't really care, I was the last one to go there. When my friend Lucia came back and told me that she was done, I was relieved because I was getting antsy and tired and just wanted to brush my teeth, lay in bed, and gossip until we fell asleep. I walked down the hallway and opened the door to the bathroom. I was so distracted I didn't even notice Caitlin's cousin in the bathroom until I turned the lights on. I quickly apologized and closed the door. At that point, I was just about to leave and run back to the room. He was in the freaking bathroom with the lights off. From what I could see before I shut the door, he was sitting on top of the closed toilet. Before I could leave, he opened the door, smiled at me, and told me to go ahead. I didn't really care about brushing my teeth at that point, but I didn't want to run away and provoke a reaction out of him. I entered the bathroom and immediately locked the door behind me. I quickly brushed my teeth and did my business. This is when things really got creepy for me. I opened the door and he was still standing there, waiting with a smile on his face. Let me walk you back to your room. I didn't even know what to say to that. 
I guess he took my silence as a yes, because before I knew it, he grabbed my right hand and was walking me back to Caitlin's room. His hands were warm and sweaty, even though he didn't look like he was sweating or remotely warm. I felt so numb and I could hear my own breathing. I honestly felt like I was going to pass out. I swear that hallway has never felt so long. When I got to the room, he looked over my hand and said goodnight, going back to the bedroom he was staying in, which we passed before we got to Caitlin's room. I walked back inside and I guess I was making a face because all my friends came up to me and asked me what was wrong. I told them what happened and they all agreed that it was super weird and Caitlin said she would talk to her mom in the morning. I was hoping it would end there, but it didn't. As a rule, we weren't allowed to lock doors during sleepovers. It's usually fine, but not in this instance. I had to have been sleeping for a few hours when Caitlin was shaking me awake. Apparently, she had been up for a while, and with me being the closest to her, I was the first one she ran to. She then told me, with her voice shaking, that her cousin had opened the door twice to her room and would stare in the room for almost a full minute before quietly closing the door. I was really frightened when I heard this. He was just watching us sleep throughout the night. I agreed to jump into Caitlin's bed with her and waited. It didn't even take that long when I heard the door open. Both of us just froze and stared straight at the door. There was no light in the hallway, so the only source of light in that room was from the moon outside, but we could still see a silhouette of someone's head peeking in through the door. We could feel his eyes on us, and he was just staring into the darkness of Caitlin's room for a few seconds. We were trying not to move so that he didn't know we were awake, but it didn't matter. He let some air out of his nose, as if he was trying not to laugh. Hey, Caitlin, he whispered, and then just closed the door. Caitlin looked like she wanted to cry. She grabbed onto me and we just held each other and waited until he decided to come back. He never ended up coming back though. I guess it wasn't as fun since he knew we were awake. We never ended up going back to sleep that night though. The next day, my mom came to get me pretty early and I said my goodbyes. I was glad Caitlin's cousin was still asleep. When I saw Caitlin in school, I asked her what happened when I left. She said she told her mom and her mom was really concerned and said she would talk to the aunt. I guess she told my mom about what happened to me too because she asked me about it later on and was primed to see if anything else happened to me. After that, she made sure that Caitlin's cousins were not around before allowing me to sleep over at their place. She didn't have to worry though because they never came back to visit after that. I don't know if Caitlin's mom had another falling out with her sister or if she just never invited them back to the house. But Caitlin's creepy cousin, let's not meet ever again. This story took place in early 2017. I had recently moved from a major city to a small town in the Midwest to get myself together and separate myself from bad habits I had developed. Previously, I had been living on the West Coast and worked for a couple who were pot farmers just trimming their weed for one season, with a few other trimmers. Nothing major stuck out to me other than the guy who was in his mid-thirties was a major asshole and super protective of his weed. His girlfriend was someone I wouldn't normally get along with, but she was alright. So I trimmed their weed for that season and they paid me a portion up front. He said the rest would come after they sold a few pounds or whatever, because that's just how the business went. They did end up paying me within a few weeks, so all was good with me. However, the man here kept texting me after I moved mid-country with random, Hey, how are you doing? I never liked the guy, got bad vibes from the get-go, but his girlfriend was a friend of a close friend, so I sort of gave them the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, the girlfriend started messaging me via text, nearing spring, after I had worked for them trimming their weed that fall season asking if I would be available to house it for them while they were on vacation out of the country. At this point, I was living in Colorado and the farm was in California. I did not have a permanent job set up yet and they were offering good money to house it, plus make some extra money trimming weed that they had left over from the season. Stupidly, I drove my ass 17 hours with dollar signs in my eyes and all was hell from there. 
They lived in a full house with a gardener's quarters attached to their main house. There is one bedroom, one bathroom, an electric stove, kettle, kitchen area in the gardener's bedroom. There is also a doorway from this area into the main house, blocked by a bookshelf on my side. When they invited me to stay in house sit, they were there for two or three days and part of their stay included drilling the door shut on the opposite side so that I could not enter their house. But that didn't bother me and I honestly understood why they would want to lock up their house but things got really freaking weird afterwards. I had been there alone for a few days, trimming, walking the dogs, filling the hummingbird feeders, watching the house like I was supposed to. The girlfriend would call from Morocco every so often to check up on me. I thought everything was fine until I started hearing water running from the kitchen inside of the house, the part of the house that I had no access to but was directly connected to. I immediately called the couple and told them that I could hear someone in their house. Their response was literally, It's none of your concern what you hear on the other side of the wall. This turned my stomach. I was in the middle of nowhere, locked by a gate on their property, hired to house it, and all of a sudden it was not my concern if someone was inside their place. It freaked me out. I still had two more weeks to be at this place, and I was properly freaked the fuck out. Over the next few days, I would feel scared and calm in waves. At one point, I was sitting outside with the dogs and they ran up to the side of the house, wagging their tails like they were greeting someone and I heard a very quiet, shh, and then footsteps patter off. I continued to hear the TV, microwave, water running in the main part of the house. The language the girlfriend was using with me via text was too personal in regard to what I was doing. I mean, sure, they could have had a camera installed, although I searched the room for any devices, but the sounds and even the dog reacting to what I heard was enough for me. Once I realized that I was house-sitting, but also being spied on in some weird way, I started to have fun with it. I don't know if I figured that I was going to die anyway, or maybe if I acted crazy enough, they wouldn't want me for whatever their purpose was. But one night, I was out on the small porch steps having a very late cigarette. It had to be close to midnight and I could hear someone walking around the perimeter of the house. So I stood up, opened the door to the gardener's quarters and closed the door as if I had walked back inside. But in reality, I just opened the door and closed it, keeping my position with a cigarette on the porch. Immediately, someone walked from the side of the house because they thought I was inside. They noticed me and ran into the woods. In my mind, I set a teeny trap to see if I was delusional and it had proved that I wasn't. So I started doing crazy dumb stuff because I was alone. Nothing too wild. I just blasted Backstreet Boys, set their garage cans up like a drum set, and walked around topless. Honestly, I thought if these people were crazy enough to be fucking watching me while I house it for them, I had to do something more ridiculous to push them away. Maybe that doesn't make sense, but I can't help but reference the Hey Arnold episode where the bully is after him and he says, Don't hit me. I'll hit me. I'm crazy. Anyway, the couple finally came back to their house from Morocco and acted like they didn't want to pay me. They did, after some pulling and tugging, but fuck. Don't ever go house hit and not really know the people you're house hitting for in the Emerald Triangle. Or just don't even go there. It's really shady business. It was about two years ago on a very hot night. It's very safe where I live and I went to buy some stuff at a supermarket at dusk. When I left the shop, it was quite dark. It gets dark suddenly in the tropics. It's only about a five minute walk home, but I was feeling uneasy. I kept stopping and turning to look behind me. Nobody, but the road was dimly lit and there are a lot of bushes, easy for someone to hide. I kept walking with this gnawing sense of unease and I still kept looking behind me. I gratefully reached home, put it out of mind, cooked dinner, watched TV, etc. About midnight I went to lay down on my bed. I'm an insomniac so I just lay there with the lights on and I started to read. I heard a creaking sound above my head. My bedroom window makes a lot of noise but I was too scared to look. Nothing happened. However, I am now on high alert. Moments later, I heard a smashing noise in the kitchen. 
I froze. My bedroom door was open, and as I said, the light was on. I heard some noises in the living room and pretended to be asleep. After a short time, I heard the click of the front door being opened. Someone had let themselves out. This was around 2.30 a.m. 2.45 a.m. I'm convinced that I'm alone and I called the police. 3.15 a.m. I called them again. 3.45 a.m. I rang them again. They told me that they only had two officers that night and that they were busy. 4.20 a.m. They arrive and ask me what the problem was. I rattled off my story. They didn't even bother to look at the broken window. All they said was, it does sound suspicious, and then left. As it stood, the person had taken my bag from my chair in my room, and yes, I had quite a bit of money in it, as I was planning to buy some furniture. I do believe that someone noticed me in the supermarket that night, followed me home, checked my bedroom window to see if I was asleep, then did their deed. I thank God that I wasn't harmed in any way. Even if I somehow managed to call the cops, screaming and begging for help, no one would have cared. So grateful I'm here, unharmed and alive. I live in a remote mountain area. About nine years ago, I was sitting at my computer at 2 a.m. when the side door got kicked in. The local meth head came through the door, pulling a revolver out of the shoulder holster. I picked up my Colt 44, cowboy gun, that I kept on my desk and put a slug right through his belly button from across the house. He fell outside so he didn't bleed in my house. I shot him there because I didn't want to kill him, but I knew from training that an abdominal shot was the most painful. A deputy and ambulance arrived about 45 minutes later. The deputy commented on my marksmanship, admired my gun, made in 1871, wrote a report and left. Six months later, he died from a meth-induced heart attack. Good riddance. When I was 26, my parents were on holiday. I went over to their house every day to feed the cat. One Friday, my husband was away doing a gig, so I waited until he left before going to the house. I got there around 6 p.m. The area that my parents lived was not a good one. There was a very large council estate right next to where they lived. Due to all the attempted break-ins, every internal door in the house could be locked. The doors were all heavy and inset into deep frames. I unlocked the front door, then unlocked the door leading into the kitchen. As I opened it, I noticed the drawers were opened and there was stuff all over the floor. I heard movement, so I quickly relocked the door before letting myself into the living room and calling the police. I explained that I was in the house, the burglar was still in the house with me. They said that they would send someone over as soon as they could. An hour later, I rang again. I was so frightened if they were still in the kitchen. I sat there with a pair of scissors in my hand, not sure what I was planning to do with them, but they made me feel a bit safer. It was about two and a half hours later when the police finally arrived. It turned out the burglar had removed the kitchen window and frame. The police reckoned it would have been very noisy and would have taken a while. They said forensics would have to come to take the fingerprints, but that they were currently very busy. It took two days for forensics to come by and it had rained heavily in the meantime, so forensics didn't get anything useful. This happened nearly 30 years ago. The burglar was never caught, but the large council estate has been pulled down and there's much less antisocial behavior. This happened back in 2008 and to this day, I don't know if the person who broke in fully realizes how close she came to losing her life. In 2008, when I was 37, I had moved back home to take care of my dying mother and stayed there after she passed. It was a fairly small country town, and the house was in a rural area, very low crime rate, and I can't even remember if I locked the doors during the daytime if someone was home. It was a fairly large ranch-style house, with my room being at the very back and my dad's on the other side of the house. My father was a pastor for our church. One Sunday morning, I was really tired and just didn't feel like going. 
My pops left, and I was enjoying laying in bed, watching TV, on super low volume, with my eyes closed. About 30 minutes later, I heard noises from the other side of the house that just weren't quite right. I laid there super still for a few seconds, just listening, trying to figure out what the noise was, and then heard quiet footsteps. It hit me that someone was there that shouldn't be. We've always had a few firearms in the house for personal protection, for scenarios just like this. I got my loaded 45 from my nightstand and very quickly made my way through the house. Then I was finally able to see there was someone in my dad's room. His dresser had a cabinet type door on it and they were open. In a fast second I saw two legs of someone bent over going through his stuff. My gun was drawn down and aimed with my finger on the trigger when the intruder's head popped out overlooking the doors. Not knowing what to expect, I was ready to fire, but I recognized the face. It was the gal that cleaned our house off and on, and her husband was a nice guy from our church. Turns out she had a drug problem, and she knew that my dad had pain meds in his dresser from when he broke his hip. I yelled so loudly at her, What do you think you're doing? Do you know how close she just came to getting shot? She gave me some lame story and excuse about her being in the area and that she had a piece so she came to our house, thought we were at church. But she also needed a t-shirt so she came looking for one of my dad's and she knocked my dad's pill bottle over by accident. Yeah okay, makes no sense whatsoever. I told her again that she almost got killed, that I was told to never point a gun at anything if I didn't intend on killing it and that this gun was pointed right at her. She was damn lucky that I recognized her in that split second. She kept apologizing and begging me not to call the cops or tell her husband. I told her to get out of my house. She left in tears and I sat on the couch trying to process everything that just happened. It was scary and infuriating at the same time and just left me with a crappy feeling. I told my dad when he got home. He was not happy for sure, but he had a meeting with her. Apparently, she admitted to everything and her problem, admitted to her husband a few days later, and went to rehab. I was living in Cape Cod year-round in a house that had been converted to three apartments. Because this was such a popular vacation destination, parking was at a premium. My apartment had five spaces, one for me, two for the mother and daughter who lived in the downstairs portion of the house, and two people who lived in the upstairs in the front. I was in the upstairs rear by the parking. One night, I get home to find a party raging in the rental house next door. A common occurrence in the summer, as almost all these houses in the neighborhood were summer rentals. I see that both of my downstairs neighbors are home, and one of my upstairs neighbors was home. However, a strange car was parked in one of the spaces, I parked in my usual space and went upstairs. I later looked out the window to find that one of my neighbors had returned and parked behind the strange car boxing it in. About 2 in the morning I was asleep when I heard something wrong. I realized I hear boots coming across the stairs into my apartment. The downstairs door was locked but it had to be closed in a very specific way or the lock didn't catch. I had never reported this as I live in a very safe upscale area. A lesson I have now learned. I honestly didn't think this was real until I saw the cat run and dive under the bed and realized that someone was definitely in my apartment. This was a large studio apartment so there was only one L-shaped room and nowhere to hide. It's interesting because you can plan on how you would act in the moment but when it actually happens everything is just instincts. I just pulled the covers over me and said, Hello? I literally greeted the intruder politely. He started yelling incoherently and he bumped into the table and knocked over a vase. I got my phone and was trying to decide if I should run past him into the bathroom and lock myself in when I heard someone else running upstairs. The guy yelling, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he's drunk and got away from me. The second guy started dragging the first guy out but then asked me if I could move my car because he was blocking them in. I told them that's not my car, it was from the front apartment. They leave and I heard them walk around front and pound on the door. I then hear a very heated argument which ends with the police being called. 
I talked to my neighbor the next day, and he was fuming. He called the rental company that handled most of the houses in the neighborhood, and from then on, renters were told that they would be towed if they used our parking area. After it was all over, it surprised me how long it took me to stop shaking. Even though it wasn't a dangerous situation, my adrenaline levels didn't know that. And just so you're aware, I never walked up the stairs without double checking that lock ever again. I wasn't home alone, but I was a kid and asleep. Our house had two stories. The first story was the main house, and the second story had been built above the separated garage. Between them, a set of doors had been built and it closed so that you would have to walk under the stairs to walk in between the two buildings. You had to be careful to stay on the garage side of the passageway so you didn't hit your head because you were passing under the slope of stairs. Our backyard was fenced and a gate from the driveway led to the passageway under the stairs. Our normal way to get into the house was not from the front door. We would get out of the car, go through the gate, greet our dog, go under the passageway, then turn left into the kitchen door. My dad was the sheriff's deputy, so the front door was bolted and chained, and the kitchen door always had a bolt. But because he was a cautious man, my dad never wanted us to accidentally get locked out of the house, so we hid a spare key in the freezer in the garage. We were strongly cautioned never to tell anyone about the key or let them see us use it. Although we spent most of our time downstairs during the day, we all slept upstairs at night. My bedroom was the furthest from the stairs. One night I was dead asleep and suddenly I jolted awake. Something had run across my hand. I ran out of my room. Mom, Dad, a rat just ran across my bed. They were instantly awake and we all went back into my room to see what it was. There, sitting on my pillow, was my brother's hamster. His cage was downstairs. How did he get up there? My brother swore he had locked the cage before he went to bed, but here the hamster was. He picked up the hamster and we all went downstairs to see what happened, except for my sister, who just went back to bed. Sure enough, the cage in the living room was open. We put him back and closed the cage door. Suddenly, my mom had a funny look on her face. Why is the kitchen light on? My dad put his hand out to tell us to stay back, then crept into the kitchen. He yelled back to us, The back door is open. At that moment, my sister came flying downstairs. Someone just ran out of the gate. She had heard the gate slam. My dad bolted out the door to catch whoever it was, but they were long gone already. None of us slept for the next hour, trying to figure out what had happened. My parents probably didn't sleep all night after reclosing and locking the kitchen door and putting us back to bed. The best we can figure is one of us somehow let someone know about the key, although all of us denied it. The person had been at our house before because the dog hadn't barked. Maybe it was a kid because nothing was stolen and the hamster cage was open. We never did figure out. Needless to say, my dad moved the key to another hiding place. I was house and dog sitting for my sister when I took her dog, Bailey, out back for the last time before heading to bed. My sister's house is a townhouse that's connected on both sides in a long line of townhomes. In the back was a long, fairly narrow strip of grass running along the homes, then a large field with long grass and weeds. So, condos, grass, then field, no fence or any structures for about a mile. I was enjoying the evening air. It was probably around 10.30 p.m. and was completely dark outside. Not feeling weary of anything at all. All was quiet except for Bailey. After about two minutes, when Bailey had done her business, I called her back and went inside. Out of habit, I immediately locked the door behind me. We walked across the room to go upstairs, with Bailey right ahead of me. Right as I walked behind the wall that separated the view from our back door, I heard the doorknob jiggle. I froze. Doorknob jiggled again. I waited a few more seconds just so I could be 100% sure and heard a definite sound of the metal jiggling and someone trying to get inside. 
I bolted upstairs where Bailey already was, still completely unaware of the situation. I hid in the closet and called the police. They showed up a while later, searched the area and couldn't find anything and told me that it was probably someone who was actually trying to get into a home a few houses down that was having a party, most likely an honest mistake. They treated me nicely, but they clearly thought I was just a scared girl who was overthinking things from being alone in the house. They left, and my brother and his friends drove an hour and a half so they could stay the night with me. If I had been who I am now, I probably would have given the police at least a little pushback. I don't think they could have done much past searching the area they did, but I would have told them that they were wrong. It was not an honest mistake. Someone was definitely trying to get into the house after they saw me out there alone. The fact that I was a 19 year old, 100 pound girl by myself with a very sweet but very dumb and not intimidating dog at all. I was outside there for a long enough time that if someone was nearby me, they would have been intentionally keeping themselves quiet. It took me about 10 seconds to cross the room out of view after coming back inside. That means the person had to be close enough to me and almost definitely watching me when I crossed behind the wall out of view to try to open the door within 10 seconds. I can't imagine that someone sees a small woman by herself, doesn't make themselves known, and tries to follow her back inside the home as pure intentions. I look back and just cringe at what could have happened if I hadn't locked the door behind me right away. This was in 2011. I'm female and was 22 at the time. A year after I graduated college, I was living in my first apartment with a friend. I had adopted the sweetest dog I've ever had, a run of the litter Pomeranian who literally loved every person she ever met. My nephew was young at the time and would sometimes handle her a little too roughly. Sweet kid, we'd always correct him, but he didn't quite realize how little she was under all that fur but she tolerated it without ever nipping or anything. One day, my roommate was gone and there was a knock at the door. It was a handyman who said that he was there for an annual check on the appliances. He was wearing the apartment complex standard uniform and had a badge, so I didn't really think twice about it, even though I hadn't been notified that this would be happening. And upon following up, he did really work there. He comes in and begins chatting and sort of leering. I felt uncomfortable but not nearly as freaked out as when my dog came rushing in between us, ears back, teeth bared, and started growling at him. He kind of awkwardly laughed and went to go pet her. Odd choice for a dog that's baring his teeth at you. She immediately lunged forward like she was going to bite him. He leaped back before she could. Tiny dog, large man, but he obviously was freaked out. At this point, she's straight up barking at him. He asked if I could put her away while he worked and I lied and said she had separation anxiety. So I recommended that he would come back another time when I could walk her or when my roommate was there so one of us could be in the room with her. He never did come back. You hear about dogs being able to read people so while I don't know if he would have done anything to me while on company hours, I still think she could sense that he wasn't a good person. She was a good girl. Last night, I was sadly sleeping in bed when I suddenly jolted awake to a loud noise coming from downstairs. It sounded like someone had broken a window and was trying to force a way into my home. Panicking, I grabbed my phone and dialed 911, then hid in the closet and waited for the police to arrive. As I crouched down in the darkness, I could hear his footsteps coming up the stairs. My heart was pounding in my chest and I was wondering if the intruder would find me. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash and the sound of glass breaking. I realized the intruder had found their way into my bedroom. I could feel my body shaking with fear as the intruder was moving closer and closer to my hiding spot. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to be ready to defend myself. Just as I was about to jump out of the closet and confront the intruder, I heard the sound of the police sirens outside. The intruder must have heard them too because he quickly fled the scene. When the police arrived, they searched the house and the surrounding area, but no intruder was there to be found. They took my statement and made sure that I was safe before leaving. I'm now taking precautions to secure my home, including installing a security system and getting a dog.
It was a frightening experience, but it taught me the importance of being prepared and taking steps to protect myself and my home. I'm also having someone come out to replace the door today, and this time it will not have a window. I'm a female and this happened last year. I was watching TV in my living room when I heard a strange noise coming from the basement. At first I dismissed it as just the house settling, but then I heard the noise again and it sounded like someone was moving around down there. Feeling uneasy I grabbed the flashlight and cautiously made my way to the basement door. As I descended the stairs I could hear the sound of someone shuffling around and my heart began to raise. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, I panned my flashlight around the room and was startled to see an intruder crouch behind some boxes, rifling through my belongings. I froze, not knowing what to do. The intruder looked up and saw me, and I could see the fear in his eyes as he scrambled to his feet and tried to run past me. A side note, I should mention this. I'm an amateur boxer and well-versed in self-defense. I wasn't about to let him get away that easily. I tackled the intruder and wrestled them to the ground. We struggled for what felt like an eternity, but eventually I managed to pin him down and call the police. When the police arrived, they arrested the intruder and took him away in handcuffs. It turned out that the intruder was a homeless man who had been looking for a place to sleep and had broken into my basement. That made me feel kind of bad. After the incident, I installed better locks on the basement door, including a deadbolt. I'm a male and I'm 21. I was home alone in my apartment studying for an upcoming exam. It was late and I was starting to feel tired, so I decided to take a break and make myself a cup of tea. As I was waiting for the water to boil, I heard a strange noise outside my apartment. It sounded like someone was fidgeting with a doorknob. At first, I thought it might be my neighbor, so I went to the door and called out, Hello? But there was no answer. I started to feel a little uneasy. I double checked the locks on the door and went back to the kitchen, but then I heard the noise again and this time, it was louder. My heart started racing as I realized someone was trying to break into my apartment. I could hear the intruder moving around my patio, knocking over furniture and rummaging through my little storage space. I felt trapped and terrified, but I knew I needed to stay calm and get the police on the line. After what felt like an eternity, I heard him dash off. I went to go look at the people and I saw red and blue lights flashing. They searched the area, but the man was never caught. In the aftermath, I felt violated. The next day, I talked to the manager of the apartment buildings. They plan on putting up cameras in the next few weeks, so hopefully this will deter the guy from coming back. All in all, all he stole was my cigarettes and my lighter. But if my door hadn't been locked, what would have happened? At around noon yesterday, my ring camera at my back door picked up someone entering my gated back patio. They walked to the far corner of my paved area, took a picture of my ring and the area surrounding my back door, and then left. My roommate left around 11.30 and saw lawn care at our building. We live in a three-building townhome complex. There seemed to be some sort of lawn equipment left outside the gate when the man entered. He may have been instructed by the supervisor to take a photo for some reason. I contacted property management and am waiting to hear back from maintenance on if he was okayed by a supervisor. Wondering if anyone's encountered something like this, the steps they took to resolve it, and then what the outcome was. This happened several years ago. I was home alone one evening when I heard a knock at the back door. This confused me, as no one ever uses that back door. My husband and I lived in a fourplex at the time, and all the units had back doors at the top of a narrow staircase. These doors were a little inconvenient to access, as you would have to go all the way around the building and up the narrow stairs, as opposed to the wider main entrance at the front. It didn't make much sense to use the back entrance, and I couldn't think of anyone who would go to that door to visit. As I approached the back door, I saw two men in the window, standing at the door. A chill went down my spine. I did not feel safe about opening this door, so I called out, Hello? One of the men tapped on the window. Yes, hello. May we come in? We're with Bresnan. At the time, my husband and I had Bresnan for a cable, but did not have any issues with it. 
I replied, we're not having any issues. Is there a problem with it? Ma'am, the man said. Can we come in? We're servicing the area and it's important. We look at your cable. I shook my head to myself. We're not having any issues, so there's no need to stop by. Ma'am, we're visiting every resident. Let us in so we can do our job. I noticed the man grabbed the doorknob and tried to open the locked door. I slowly grabbed the knife from inside our knife block and held it at my chest. We're not having any issues, I repeated, trying not to convey the shakiness of my voice. So you don't need to be here. The two figures appeared to shuffle and then straighten. Ma'am, let us in. We're on a deadline and need to do our job. I glanced at the clock, gauging when my husband would arrive home from work, all while gripping the knife tighter. Ma'am. Ma'am. I saw them try the doorknob again. I closed my eyes and felt overwhelming gratitude as I always locked my doors. Just then, a thought came to the forefront of my mind. I'm sorry I can't help you. Could I please get your name and badge numbers? I'll give your supervisor a call and let them know that the cable is fine. I heard another shuffle and one of the men replied. No need to, ma'am. We're sorry we wasted your time. With that, both of the men exited the staircase and disappeared into the night. Shaken up, I held that knife tight and tried to get my bearings. I remember making a mental note to call the cable company or the police, but my hands were shaking so badly I couldn't even hold the phone. With the knife still grasped to my chest and the phone falling out of my other hand, I sank to the floor and cried. When my husband returned home, I told him what had happened. I was still very shaken up and had started crying after he came home. He immediately called a cable company and spoke to a representative. They informed us that no one from the company was out on assignment in our area. The next day, we asked our neighbors if they had a visit from the company. No one had. So to the two creepy men that tried to break into my home under the disguise of cable repair, let's not meet. My grandparents live in a house located in a very secluded area, surrounded by woods. The nearest neighbor is about a half mile away from the house. Whenever my grandfather has work in town for a couple days, he calls me home to take care of my grandmother who suffers from arthritis. One night, it started raining really heavily and the power was cut for the entire night. It was really windy and since this house is pretty old, you can hear a lot of creaking sounds. At around 1 a.m. in the middle of the night, I woke up to a loud knocking sound on the front door. My grandmother was still sleeping and I didn't want to wake her up. The noise freaked me out because it was impossible for someone to be out there at this time in the rain outside our house. But I thought maybe it's my grandfather who probably had some emergency and had to come home at this time of night. As I walked to the main door to see who it was, the knocking stopped. I saw our dog standing in the corner of the room, looking at the door with his tail between his legs. He looked super scared. I figured something wasn't right and that if someone was outside my door, it obviously wasn't my grandfather. I went upstairs to see who it was through a window and just saw a shadow, but I'm not sure if it was actually a person's shadow or just a hallucination from my sleepy mind. I did not open the door and went back to bed. The creepiest part was, the next morning, I saw muddy footprints on my porch and a broken door handle. My friends went to Mexico for vacation and asked me to house sit and take care of their dogs while they were gone. They'd pay me $40 a day just to sit around and let their dogs go out when they needed to. I am disabled, so this helps a lot. This is a semi-rural area, and the houses were roughly a quarter mile apart. Police have to come down from town 15 miles away, and response time can be well over an hour. I always take my pistol with me. It's always quiet when I've stayed there. This time was different. I was in the shower when the dogs started barking and growling. They are big, large German shepherds, and one is actually police trained. The owners loan him to the county as a drug dog, and if you tell them to be quiet, they obey. This time they didn't, so I went on high alert. I shut off the water and looked outside the window. I didn't see anything, but when I walked out of the bathroom, I saw a shadow go across the bedroom window. I whispered to the dogs to hush, and they did. 
That's when I heard a man's voice. I couldn't make out everything he was saying, but I distinctly heard two words. Come around. So I'm sure that there's more than one person. I run into the living room with my pistol and saw the door handle turn. I yelled, I have a gun and I will fucking use it. I heard feet run away. I was telling Siri to dial 911 and got the county sheriff fast. She said there were two cars on another call not too far away and it would take about 20 minutes for them to get there. That's better than the usual hour, but I was shaken up. I explained that I was on a farm and I would have to go down the road to unlock the cattle gate to let them in and to please tell the police officers that I would be carrying a pistol and to please not shoot me by mistake because I was not going outside the house without it. The dispatcher said, Oh no, do not go out there without your gun. I will tell them. The good thing about living in a red state. She asked if I could see the road and I can. So she said, Wait in the house until I saw blue lights. I hung up and called my friends in Mexico. Their camera footage could be downloaded via an app and they said that they would go through it while I waited for the cops. I locked the house and went down to the gate when the police arrived. They searched the whole place, including the barn, but didn't find anything. While they were looking, my friends texted me the camera footage. There was a man on the porch. Unfortunately, cameras were not angled to get a shot of his face and it was of course dark. I still think that there is more than one creep because of what they said, come around. The police were very nice and said that they had passed a man on a bike on the way, which was strange for this area, especially at night, and they went to go look for him, but that's all they could do. They took a full report but never caught the creep. My husband came and stayed with me for the rest of the trip. One of our neighbors said that they found a tent and some gear near the woods a few weeks before, so maybe someone was living back there. Maybe a homeless person from town. I have house sat again since and it was quiet. They are all going away for Christmas and I will be there again. A lot of people asked me if I would have shot the creep if he had broken in. Yeah, absolutely. I would be sorry for hurting someone, but if it's them or me, yeah. Creepy porch guy, let's not ever meet again. A few years ago, I lived in a large apartment complex. My unit was at the very end of the first floor. A lot of strange people lived there, but seemed pretty harmless. One night, my boyfriend was over, thankfully, and we were watching a movie. I noticed a shadow passed by the window, but then I felt like it didn't completely pass by. At that point, I started feeling like I was being watched, but was too scared to turn and look. I finally look and see a silhouette of a person and a pair of eyes peeking between the space and the blinds. I told my boyfriend someone was out there and he jumped up. We saw a person's shadow run away. My boyfriend peeks out the window and we assume he had ran around the back of the building. A few minutes later, there was a knock at my door. My boyfriend and I just looked at each other because it's like 1 a.m. I told him not to answer because I didn't want to open the door to anyone. After a minute of the decision, he's adamant of answering it so I tell him to grab a knife. He opens the door and there is no one out there. He looked over and saw a man nearby a tree doing the come here motion with his hand. We called the cops and they said that they would keep an eye out, but we never heard anything more. In that moment, it felt like the beginning of a scary movie. The actual encounter was brief but terrifying. I'm a 30 year old female. I live with my wife and our sweet orange tabby cat. We own a home in an older neighborhood in a college town. The neighborhood is mostly families and older people. Right around 2 a.m. Monday morning, my wife and I are both woken up by our cat. Immediately after we hear him, we distinctly hear someone rattling our door, making the sound that they would have been holding the door handle while trying to open it. We rush to our living room, my wife wielding her aluminum bat. She smacks our recliner and screams, I have a fucking bat. Our cat crouches on the ground and is growling, his hackles raised. I got 911 on the line and we all got into one bedroom with a lock on it while waiting for the police. They came by but didn't see anything. That night my wife didn't get any more sleep. 
I only got a little myself after our cat curled up next to me. We both called out of our jobs at the university on Monday and wound up getting lock bars for our front and back doors and replaced our back door lock with one that requires a key on both sides. This thankfully went as well as it could have, but was so out of the blue and upsetting. More than anything, this is just a reminder to stay vigilant and invest in what security measures you can. We never imagined someone would try to break in in the dead of night when there are two cars in the driveway. This is a rather painful story to retell, I and mean, it still keeps me up at night, but I'll do my best, as my therapist says writing about it will help me out and help me get through it. It's been two years, and it still gets to me. It was just after midnight, and I was home alone. My husband was out of town for work and wouldn't be back for a few days. I was curled up on the couch watching TV when I heard a noise coming from the front door. At first, I thought it was just the wind or a stray cat, but then I heard it again. It sounded like someone was trying to open the front door. My heart started racing and I quickly grabbed the phone to call the police. As I was dialing, I heard a loud crash and the sound of glass shattering. Someone had broken into my home. I quietly made my way to the kitchen and hid and waited for the police to arrive. Moments later, I heard footsteps coming towards me. They were slow and deliberate and sounded like they were getting closer and closer. I knew I had to act fast, but it was panicking in my mind. I grabbed a kitchen knife and prepared to defend myself. Suddenly, the door to the kitchen burst open and a man stepped in. He was rather tall and somewhat muscular. He was wearing a ski mask that was covering most of his face. I could tell that he was older, but not much more than that. I held the knife out, rather uneasy, but he easily overpowered me and knocked me to the ground. I just laid there. He told me not to get up, not to move, and everything would be okay. So I was just laying there, helpless and terrified. The man was rummaging through my belongings, every so often looking back at me. When he did, I closed my eyes. I didn't want to stare at him. Not only not to make him mad, but also I didn't want that image in my head. He took my jewelry, my money, and my phone before finally leaving the house. I was left alone shaken and traumatized by this experience. I honestly laid there till the police came. Once I heard them, I finally got up. They searched the house and the surroundings and ended up taking a report. As of now, the man has not been caught and this was two years ago. I was left to live in fear, wondering if he would ever come back. Since then, we put up cameras outside the house and we replaced the door in the back that had a glass window and it's now a much sturdier door. Anyway, that's my story and I hope one day I won't think about that every night before I go to bed. I was sitting in my living room one evening and I noticed movement outside my window. I glanced up and saw a man peering in. His face was pressed against the glass. I jumped up in shock and ran to the window, but he had already disappeared into the darkness. I felt very violated and scared, knowing that someone had been watching me in my own home. I immediately called the police, but there was little that they could do without any identifying information about this peeping Tom. The next night, it happened again. I was in my bedroom getting ready for bed when I heard rustling outside my window. I looked up and saw the same man staring at me with a look of excitement in his face. I screamed and ran to the phone, but by the time the police arrived, he was gone. This went on for weeks with the man appearing at all hours of the night, watching me from outside my window. No matter if I had the blinds drawn or curtains up, it seemed like he would find the opening and stare in. I know this because my neighbor told me that he saw a man hanging around my house. I felt like a prisoner in my own home constantly looking over my shoulder and jumping at every noise. I tried to stay strong and vigilant, but eventually, the stress and anxiety became too much. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, and felt like I was losing my mind. It was a constant battle to feel safe and secure in my own home. Finally, the police were able to catch the man in the act. It turns out that it was my neighbor who had been stalking me for months. I felt a sense of relief knowing that he was finally caught, 
but the trauma of the experience stayed with me for years to come. I lost my sense of security and privacy, and it took me a long time to regain those feelings again. This happened years ago when I was in college. We were four girls living in a dorm room. So I had this roommate, Anna, that used to stay late at night outside or at her boyfriend's, and she would always forget to lock our dorm room door. One night, around 3 a.m., I woke up from a nightmare. I heard something like a girl screaming, only once. But when I realized the dorm was all quiet, I thought for sure that it was just my imagination. I noticed that Anna had returned. She was in bed and I felt a strange urge to go see if the door was locked. So for the next few minutes I had this internal dialogue. Go check the door. No, cause if I stand up I'll lose my sleep. Eventually my laziness won and I fell asleep. When I woke up my roommates briefed me on what happened that night. The whole dorm was talking about it. Apparently a stranger entered our dorm that night. He was in his late 40s. He heard some girls in the room were not sleeping and were loud, so he banged on their door and said something that I can't quite remember now. After some time, thinking he left, one of the girls went to the bathroom. The bathrooms are located in the hallway. As she was in the bathroom, he tried to break open the door. This was happening on the same floor where we lived, so that's probably why I heard the scream. Luckily, another girl saved her when she called the police and he got scared and ran away. But that's not all. Before he tried to assault that girl, he had been in the study room and vandalized it. He pooped on the floor, ripped the blast that was on a chair, and did other stuff in there. Made the study room a mess. The study room was right next to my room, and guess what? That night we slept where our door unlocked. Just like you guys always say in here, always trust your gut. I should have trusted mine and checked the door. Thank God he didn't try our door. A few days later, I heard that the police found the guy, and I heard that he was free. After that event, they increased the level of dorm security. Evening, folks. This has been ongoing for some time now, but tonight was particularly weird. Please excuse any weird formatting. I'm doing this on mobile currently under my blankets, kinda freaking out. So, some context. I'm 25, female, and live on the second story of my building across from a big city. We have lots of houseless people in my area, and there's a safe injection site right next to my home. I'll mention right off the bat that I have been houseless within my lifetime from the ages of 8 to 10 and grew up in the care of a addict. I completely empathize with folks who are having a tough go at things. However, I also value my safety and my neighbor's safety for that matter. So I will preemptively apologize if at any point I sound frustrated at this ongoing situation. I'm mad at the situation that has plagued both the life of myself and the houseless man who is tormenting my building. This all started about a year ago when my partner and I were nearly attacked by this houseless man while downstairs in our parking lot. To summarize the situation, we had just gotten home where my partner was going to drop me off. We didn't live together at the time, we kind of do now, but only on the weekends. And as we said our goodbyes, we noticed a man pacing in the visitor's parking lot who was seemingly having a rough time. We kept our distance, car doors locked and windows up, and eventually the man got the hint and left. Just to set the scene a bit here. My parking lot has two sections, one is a public parking guest area and the second is a locked gate with a smaller locked door for residents to safely park overnight. The gate requires a FOB entry and the door has a regular building key. 
Both were made with metal bars. This is important for later. I got out of the car and proceeded to walk towards the door, key in hand. My partner started up the car which caused the houseless man to rush back into the parking lot and promptly attack the car. He hopped onto the hood, beating on the windows and trying to rip off the mirrors. I watched in horror as this terrifying situation evolved next to me. A mere 14 feet away. I quickly got my key into the lock and opened the door at lightning speed. The sound of my keys caught the attention of the man and he promptly sprinted towards me. Thankfully, by this point, I had begun closing the door behind me. By the time he got to me, I slammed the door in his face and stepped backwards while he screamed at me. When my partner realized I was safely behind a locked door, he got into gear and drove away. Moments later, he called me and instructed me to get away from the door and safely upstairs. It was a good thing he did. I felt like I was in freeze mode. I couldn't move. My heart was pounding out of my chest as this houseless man screamed disgusting things at me. Most of which revolved around essaying me and gesturing crudely at his groin and flicking his tongue. I finally broke my fear freeze, walked away as he chanted, Pretty lady, pretty lady, want to taste, huh? Those words are burned into my memory. I rushed upstairs and quickly closed the blinds of my windows. I heard him still yelling and chanting outside for a good few minutes after. But then I heard something unusual. A lighter clicking. The silence was deafening as the lighter clicked repetitively. Eventually the click stopped and he began laughing. I looked outside, peering through the blinds, I realized he was attempting to set our building's wooden fence on fire. Luckily it had rained, so the fence wasn't catching. I quickly hopped on a call with the emergency services who sent a police car and fire truck. As soon as the cop car pulled up, the houseless man went ballistic and started screaming bloody murder. They apprehended him quickly and took him away in the ambulance. Months passed with no sign of him, but one day a resident in my building reported being attacked by a man who matched his description. After the incident, we, the residents, repeatedly heard him screaming, crying, moaning and laughing at least three times a week outside our building, generally at night. He also started trashing and damaging people's cars when they parked in the guest parking lot. Thankfully, we installed a new gate last week that closes off the guest parking behind another FOB-activated gate. The thing is, as soon as the gate got installed, the man left us alone. It has been quite a week. It's been nice, but tonight, about an hour ago, I was laying in bed scrolling on TikTok when I heard what sounded like soft sobbing. At first I thought it was coming from TikTok, but after some scrolling I realized it was coming from outside. I looked outside and there he was, sobbing and pacing around the back alley. He suddenly switched gears though and started jogging while groaning loudly and continuing to cry while occasionally hitting and attacking the new fence we installed. He has seemingly left now, but I am terrified at this new habit. I am really hoping he doesn't start crying outside my building routinely. I feel really bad for the guy and I also feel bad making this post, but the whole situation is really freaking me out. I don't feel safe. My own home and... I just need to vent. Thanks for reading. If anything else happens, I'll update this post.
This story happened to me back when I still lived at my parents' house. I was commuting to college at the time and had three siblings that also lived at home. My brother and two sisters. For some context, we live on five acres in rural Ohio, surrounded on both sides by woods and farm fields. Additionally, during the week, my dad normally left for work at 2am, so I had always felt like it was my job to be the man of the house because he was gone during the times when you would imagine something sketchy happening. However, on this night, because it was the weekend, my dad was home. I woke up to the sound of my brother's voice trying to get my attention. We had separate rooms upstairs and Coming out of our rooms, you could look down over the banister and see our front door. When I woke up, it took a few moments to get out of the haze and realize what was going on. I looked at the clock and it was around 2.30 a.m. My brother told me there were two men at our front door. Of course, now this is a real wake-up call. We quietly walked out of the room and peeked over to look at the front door. When we looked, there was no one at the door, but I noticed my parents off to the side, out of view of the glass on the front door. I whispered down to my dad, and he told me that there were two guys who had been talking to each other and knocking on the door. Hearing my dad say this freaked me out even more. I went back into my room and grabbed my pistol. Quickly shuffling down the stairs after looking to make sure they weren't at the door. If they had been, they would have easily seen me coming down the stairs as it is in direct view of the door. My brother is right behind me as we headed over to where our parents are. Whispering to try to find out what's going on. My parents had woken up to our dog barking and come out to see these two men knocking loudly at the door. At this point, we see the men return and they begin knocking again. Despite the fact that no one had come to the door and our dog was still actively barking. The fact that they were there at this time in a location where houses are spread out hundreds of yards and still knocking while the dog was barking made this situation even more terrifying. After a couple of minutes, the men walked away and we shuffled across the kitchen into the family room to peek out the windows into our driveway, which is lit up by our outside lights. There was a black Cadillac sitting there, but no one was inside from what we could see. Immediately, the question was, where did the guys go? They weren't in the car and they were no longer at the front door. Unfortunately, we figured out the answer when the handles to our back French doors started jiggling. They were actively trying to enter the back of our house, which enters into the kitchen. At this point, I just remember my mum frantically saying David as pure terror overwhelmed her. At this point, two things happened. Adrenaline filled my body as I prepared my handgun, horrified at the very real possibility that I might have to shoot these men. Secondly, my dad finally grabbed his phone and called the police and calmly told them what was happening. Thankfully, after a minute of jiggling, they stopped at the back door and disappeared again, only to return to their knocking at the front door. However, at this point, several minutes had gone by and suddenly we saw the local police fly up in multiple cruisers with their lights on. As they whipped into our driveway and the yard, the two men bolted away, attempting to run the long way around the house across the driveway. One of them disappeared out of view, but the other was intercepted by an officer yelling at him to get on the ground. He didn't, and he was immediately tased and fell to the ground. Some of the officers went around the house after the other guy, and 
one of them came back to my dad and as we came out to the front they ended up finding the other man hiding in my sister's little playhouse in the backyard. It appears both of them were drunk or high as one of them had cocaine on him. While they were both arrested that night we never did find out what they were charged with or what happened to them. Needless to say the whole experience wasn't fun. So random men at our door in the middle of the night? Let's not meet again. So let me preface this by saying I grew up in an upper middle class area. Really nice neighborhood with nothing but old people as neighbors. We live near great schools and there's a relatively low crime rate other than one neighborhood known for meth. When I was 13 we had our first break in. Nobody was home and I had just gotten off the bus. My mom was waiting for me at the top of the driveway in her grocery filled car. She was on the phone with my dad. She told me to wait with her since the window was busted out. My dad came home with three friends and got baseball bats to search the house. Nothing. The only reason we didn't call the cops is because we have a cat who likes to sit on the windowsill and we often left the window open for a breeze, leaving just the screen. We assumed that maybe the cat knocked out the screen by accident because someone forgot to close it. But then we later saw a boot print in the dirt going to the window. I noticed our rug is all scooby doo and rolled up from someone running. We assumed they saw our alarm system which tracks movement and flashes and got scared and ran thinking it was a silent alarm. What's odd is one step after entering the window was the computer, a TV, cash, and a camera. Nothing stolen. The second time getting broken into, I was 14. Same exact thing, window busted. Nothing taken, boot print. This time we knew someone was coming after our house. We started setting our alarm more often. About six months later, I'm in the backyard sitting on the swing with my back facing the woods. My mom comes out on the upper deck and calls out to me saying that her and my dad are going to go see a movie and they would be back home in a few hours. I said okay and came back in through the basement door. Stupidly, I forgot to lock it. I stay in the basement in a side room with only one exit point and play Xbox. I put on my headset that covers my ears and enjoy about 20 minutes of Call of Duty before my cat who is sitting on my lap absolutely freaks out and bolts. I absolutely heard nothing because of my headset but got up because she is quite scared. I see my basement door shaking after presumably slamming open into the wall. My heart drops and I think. Maybe I left it cracked and the wind pushed it open. I don't see anyone standing in the doorway, but right behind the door there's a huge bush. I got a bad feeling in my gut and bolted upstairs. I burst through the basement door to my main floor, leaving it open, and run outside to my neighbors. My neighbors aren't home, but I hide in their yard while looking at my front door, which is glass and somewhat see-through. I wait for about 45 seconds and start laughing at myself thinking I'm just crazy. That's when I see a 6 foot man walk up the basement steps and past our front door. He peeks through the glass and I see him wearing a brown shirt and has short black or brown hair. I can't tell much more because the glass is opaque and because I was in my neighbor's yard. I called my parents and get no answer. I then called my sister who luckily worked at the theater and was there and she answers. I explain that there's someone in her house and she gets the on-duty cop to send a bunch over. My sister rushes in the theater that my parents are in and they call a nearby neighbor that has guns to go check on me. At the time, they thought I was still in the house. I see the man in my house turn away from the front door and head left down the hall. The left side of the hall has my parents' room and an office room. The office room is where he usually entered, assuming it was the same guy breaking in. After 30 seconds, I see him pass the front door again and go down the right side. That's where my room and my sister's room was. My neighbor is now coming into my yard with a pistol and calling for me, but he doesn't know I'm across the street and I'm too scared to yell to him. Right as he's turning to the front of the yard, he enters to the side 
I see the man come back out and go downstairs where he presumably left through the basement door. Poor neighbor probably thought I was kidnapped, so I called him on his cell phone to let him know that I was across the street. No joke, six police came, three dogs, and they were all armed and ready. They kneeled in front of my garage, and my parents rushed home using the garage door opener to open it for them. Looked like a movie where they all had their guns out and the dogs aiming at the garage in case he was hiding. He was not there, which I knew from seeing him go back downstairs. The dogs start sniffing. They find a scent outside and follow it, but end up just picking up another cop's scent and losing it. They search the entire house and say it's clear, and I go back inside. We sent a neighborhood email out that night, and the next morning we got a response from a neighbor six doors down on the edge of the woods. I saw a man sprinting through the woods back into the meth neighborhood. He didn't get a good look at him, but definitely saw him sprinting, so he must have escaped through the back door and then ran back into the woods. The more I thought back on the experience, the more I realized these things. 1. It was probably the same guy since nothing was ever stolen and they were within a year and a half. 2. This man clearly didn't want money because he had tons of expensive things lying around that he didn't take. He searched each hall for 30 seconds and left. He was looking for something or someone. 3. When I had my back to the woods on the swing, I think he was watching me. When my parents said they were leaving, he must have taken that as an opportunity. He had to have heard me because he came through the least visible door, the one I had gone through. 4. I was in a room that had no exits. If my cat wasn't on me, I wouldn't have heard him and he would have blocked my only exit and done god knows what. 5. I'm lucky he hid for a second before coming in. I'm guessing he wanted to make sure no one else was with me and waited to listen. 6. He was seen running back to the meth neighborhood, so he was probably drugged out and wanted to kill me. He never once took an item and only broke in three times when my parents weren't home. I strongly believe that this man wanted to find me and I think he was watching me from the woods. There's no telling how many days he watched me because I used to sit on that swing nearly every day. He was probably waiting for the right time for me to be alone. I love my cat to death and fully give her credit for saving my life. If she wasn't so loving, and if she didn't want to be on my lap every waking hour of the day, I would have never known he came in, and I don't even like thinking about what he would have done to me when he had my one exit sealed off. It's still super scary to think about, and I'm not gonna lie, I hated being alone even up until I moved to college. I occasionally hear very distinct boot noises running up my stairs and back down. I would always check the back deck to see if anyone was leaving but never saw anything. I constantly set the alarm from there on out and hated going on the swing when no one was home after that. Gave me some lasting paranoia too. So to the man who probably wanted to gut me, let's please not meet again. I was around 8 years old. I was playing Super Mario in my room at night, probably around 8 p.m. or so. I had a large window like two normal windows side by side. The blinds were down but were slightly open so you could see the darkness outside. While I was playing I had a feeling like I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked to the left and clearly saw the outline of a white t-shirt in the window. Looked like the size of an adult. I remember being frozen and the hair standing up on my skin. I was petrified. It felt like minutes but it was only seconds. I dropped my controller and ran out the room, telling my mom immediately. Just as that happened, I remember my dad pulling into the driveway. He said he saw nothing and checked around the whole house and everything, but found nothing. I was so scared though, I tried to even tell myself that it was a reflection of something in the room, but I knew what I saw. I tried to sit in the same spot for a few days to recreate the reflection and what it would look like, but nothing ever caused that look. I knew it. Someone was watching me. This all just happened 15 minutes ago and I'm freaked out, but hopefully I'll do an okay job recapping what just happened. At my apartment building, it's all street parking. Tonight as I pulled in and parked, I noticed a man walking the opposite direction from me. 
but then we made eye contact and he immediately turned around and walked in my direction. At first, I thought it was strange, but then he started to cross the street and was making a beeline for me. He wasn't saying anything at all, so I didn't think he wanted money or directions. It freaked me out, so I frantically grabbed my keys out of my purse and peeled out of there. What freaked me out though was that he was close enough to get into my car at that point that I made crystal eye contact and he looked pissed. So I drove off and circled around. I did not see that guy anywhere but decided to circle around again and look super carefully. Once again, looking around the sidewalk and the street and he's not walking around. I start to get out of my car and I see the guy coming out of the area where there were a bunch of bushes where I guess he had been hiding. Again, he beelines it for me. At this time, I'm actually on the phone with a really good friend of mine who at this point says he'll drive over. Luckily, he lives about 10 minutes from me. Said friend looks around and walks me into my apartment where I am safe now. But seriously, what the hell was that all about? He didn't say anything threatening to me, so I don't think I can call 911. But I do think I'll try the non-emergency number when I calm down. Stay safe out there, folks. So the other night I was watching TV at 4am because I have stupid sleeping habits. I started hearing someone scream in despair. I opened my windows to take a look out closer, but the person was behind some trees and I couldn't make out what was going on. The screams were loud and painful, sounded like a woman, but I was not sure. The person finally got past the trees and I was able to see two men and one woman. The woman was screaming and the men were there, trying to help or being the reason she was screaming. Being a woman myself, I assumed the worst and called the local police. They are like 20 meters away from where it was happening. I don't know how they didn't hear what was going on. I described the situation and the location and the police officer said that they were going to go check on it. The woman was still screaming. I couldn't understand what, then collapsed on the floor. The men were behind her but they went on their way as she kept walking towards the police station. I never saw a police officer come out of the station, but they could have taken a route that I couldn't see from my window. I hope everything was okay with her and that she just had some bad news delivered and was stressing out and they were just friends helping. But if that was the case, I don't understand why they went away. The police said that they would call me back if they needed any info, but never did. First post here, it's short but creeped me and my wife out. I stayed up last night, couldn't sleep because I drank coffee way close to bedtime. My wife usually falls asleep way before I do and doesn't wake up to anything. Anyways, I stayed up watching videos and movies and even read a few stories on here. Back and forth through the kitchen getting snacks and drinks. Finally decided to try to go to bed around 2.30am but was tossing and turning. I decided to take a hot shower as that usually relaxes me. I got up, took a pain pill, recent surgery, and I was kind of hurting. I finally fell asleep around 3.30 a.m. My wife gets up around 7.30 a.m. to use the restroom and yells, Babe, the front door is open. I stumble out of bed and grab my pistol, heading towards the living room. I look around and see a dim blue light coming in because the sun is beginning to rise and the door is halfway open. I quickly shut it and lock it, go back to my kids' room, and they both sound asleep. I check the kitchen, bathroom, even our closets, nothing. I start looking for missing things like keys, console, belongings, and everything is still in place. Nothing is missing. I look up the windows, vehicles still parked. We never use the front door ever. It's always deadbolted and locked, and I don't remember the last time we used it. Where our driveway is is the more convenient way to go in through the kitchen back door. We never figured it out. I was back and forth through the living room all night, and the door was closed. This is the first time this happened to me in 10 years that we've been here. Never any crime or break-ins around here. It really creeped us out. This happened last year sometime. I'm a small guy and I'm married. 
We live in a sketchy apartment complex. Anyway, we were sleeping one night and out of nowhere, someone starts pounding on our door at like 2 a.m. We both wake up shocked and a little scared because neither of us really have any close friends or family here. Because we are both kind of antisocial, and the people we do have, we call multiple times before showing up. We also at the time didn't have a peephole, and we were the only people with a white door instead of a red door. So when we have new people come over, we tell them that. We didn't answer the door, but I grabbed a kitchen knife just in case. They kept pounding on the door for a good five minutes, while also sometimes trying the handle to get in. When they finally stopped and left, we watched them from our window as they got into an SUV. We still have no idea who it was, but I still think about it sometimes. I'm hesitant to share my story, but I feel it's important to warn others about the dangers of being a peeping Tom. You see, I used to be one. It all started out when I was a teenager, and I discovered the thrill of watching people through their windows at night. At first, I didn't think it was harmful. I was just curious about what people did in their private lives. But as time went on, my obsession grew. I found myself spending hours every night peering into strangers' homes, watching them go on about their daily routines. I thought I was being careful. I never got caught and I made sure not to do anything that would harm anyone. But then one night, everything changed. I was watching a woman through her bedroom window when she suddenly turned and caught me. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't know what to do, so I just stood there, staring at her in terror. To my surprise, she didn't call the police or scream for help. Instead, she walked over to the window and opened it. I thought she was going to confront me, but instead, she just looked at me with pity in her eyes. She told me what I was doing was wrong and that it could have serious consequences. She also told me she understood why I was doing it, that she had been in a dark place before and done things that she wasn't proud of. That conversation changed my life. I realized what I was doing was not only wrong, but also harmful to myself and others. I stopped being a peeping Tom after that night and never looked back. It's been years since that incident, but I still think about it often. Grateful to that woman for showing me compassion and understanding when I needed it the most. And I hope that my story can serve as a warning to others who might be tempted to engage in similar behaviors. It's never too late to change your ways and make a positive difference in the world.